Messiah that can lead the Bengals to a victory tonight. They're in as a wild card. If they lose, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers watching tonight in Pittsburgh that will take the final wild card spot. Yesterday, the NFC Central Division picture was clarified down in Dallas. Green Bay, Don Mikowski hit Ed West to beat the Cowboys. And tonight, Mikowski and his teammates are in Green Bay with a vested interest in tonight's game. If the Minnesota Vikings lose, the Packers win the division. If the Vikings win, they're in the playoffs and Green Bay is out. Tonight, the Bengals must win to make the playoffs. And the Vikings must win to make the playoffs. Two teams, their playoff lives on the line tonight. As the Cincinnati Bengals beat the Minnesota Vikings on ABC's Monday Night Football. tonight uh, are you ready for the football and monday night party hey this is rock and randall hey ready to get the good time started you gotta hit them gotta dock them get the play called right all my rowdy friends are here for monday night ABC's Monday Night Football, brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? By IBM, whatever your size, whatever your needs, IBM is working to bring you the best solution. And by ITT, building businesses into leaders. From the Metrodome in Minneapolis on Christmas night, the final game of the 1989 regular season, the Cincinnati Bengals and the Minnesota Vikings. And tonight, for both teams, it's sudden death. A win tonight, and it's on to the playoffs, a loss, and it is all over. And let's take a look at the two scenarios that could take place tonight. If Cincinnati wins, Houston will be at Cincinnati in an AFC wild, wild card game. Green Bay clinches the NFC Central Championship. Pittsburgh is out of the playoffs. Minnesota out of the playoffs. Now... If Minnesota should win tonight, Pittsburgh will be at Houston in the AFC wild card game, that game next Sunday. Minnesota clinches the NFC Central Championship. Cincinnati out of the playoffs. Green Bay out of the playoffs. And there it is. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford. We're delighted you're with us. Merry Christmas, happy holiday, and again, what a pleasure to bring you this final game of the 1989 regular season. Cincinnati coming into tonight with an 8-7 and seven record. They came within inches, of course, of winning it all, and a Joe Montana miracle took it away from him in the final seconds in Super Bowl 23. But they come in a very confident football team off a 61-7 victory over Houston, and a team, you get the sense that they plan on other games for this season. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Vikings, uh, a trouble team. They are 9-6 and six on the year, and they have the number one defense in the entire National Football League. But when they give up points, they give up those points at the wrong time. They have an offense that when they acquired Herschel Walker, was said to be the final spoke in the wheel that would take them to the Super Bowl. And Al Michaels, if I could, I could quote a former colleague of mine, that has not eventuated. I, I think I remember that colleague. It hasn't eventuated. And, and one reason the Vikings have had problems offensively this year is that Walker has not become the dominant force they had hoped that he would. Anthony Carter has been bothered by injuries, but most importantly, they have gotten very, very inconsistent play from their quarterbacks, in particular Wade Wilson, who left last week's game against Cleveland with a knee injury in the fourth quarter. Tommy Kramer finished up. They lost in overtime. Wilson, though, is fine tonight and will start tonight's game, the most important of his career as Minnesota tries to extend his season. But they do have two things going through the Vikings. As Frank mentioned, the number one defense in the league. And this team has not lost a game at home this year. They are 7-0 in the Dome in 1989. And going back to last season, counting their playoff victory against the Rams, the Vikings have won their last 12 home games. Tonight, Dan, they face the Bengals, and there's no question if the Bengals play the Way they did against Houston last week. They will be playing at Riverfront on Sunday. And <laughs> nice tie, Santa. I like that. Thank you that. very much. Yeah. Uh, the kids struck again at Christmas. <laughs> I also have Santa Claus on my socks. You know, there's the rub, Al, and you used the word inconsistent when you talked about the
the Viking quarterback situation. Inconsistent has to describe this entire Bengal ball club. Uh, twice this year, they've had games where they've scored in the 50s and in the 40s, followed it up the next week with games where they only scored seven points. Sam Weish has implored his ball club, guys, we can't have another offensive lapse. We've reached the playoffs now. That's what tonight's ball game is, a playoff game. One offensive lapse, we're out of it. If you like life in the pits, folks, it doesn't get any better than what you're going to see tonight. The Bengal offensive line against the Viking defensive line in particular. Reimers and Munoz on the left side of the Bengal line against Millard and Dolman. Great A stuff. And here we go as the 1989 regular season comes to an end. Two wild card games to be played Sunday. For certain, one of them at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The Rams against the Eagles. The other either at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati if the Bengals win tonight or at the Astrodome in Houston, where the Oilers would host Pittsburgh if Minnesota wins tonight. Lee Johnson to kick off for Cincinnati, and Anthony Carter goes back to return kickoffs tonight, along with Herschel Walker and Alfred Anderson. And that's a different twist from Jerry Burns. Carter, in past years, has returned punts, but here he is on the kickoff team, and Johnson's line drive is dropped by Anderson, picked up by Carter at the four, and Anthony Carter gets thrown out of bounds up at about the 23-yard line by Ricky Dixon. So the Vikings will take over at that point. Wade Wilson and his numbers not good at all. Seven touchdowns and 12 interceptions, and he's well down the list, averaging under seven yards per pass attempt. Offensively, Herschel Walker and Rick Fenney are the running backs. Carter and Hassan Jones, the wideouts. Steve Jordan, along with Keith Jackson of Philly, going to the Pro Bowl. Zimmerman and McDaniel are both going to the Pro Bowl. Loudermilk the center with Kalis and Tim Irwin. From the 23, Wilson to throw to set up the screen. Hits Fenney, has two blockers in front, and an auspicious beginning for Minnesota as Fulcher drags him down at the 50-yard line. So a little screen perfectly executed to Rick Fenney and a 28-yard pickup for the Vikings on their first play. Great call. The team is fired up. They are smoking down there tonight. You get the big pass rush. The screen pass is designed to let them come in, let them take advantage of the rush. And a good move by Fenney. Good blocks out in front. Loudermilk was there. McDaniel, the pro bowler. Fenney's longest play of the year, and what a time to get it. First and 10, Minnesota from the 48-yard line. It is Walker. And Walker starting right, going left, and that didn't fool anybody. Loss of two. McClendon, Crumry, and Buck, who made the last tackle. The three up front, White, Xander, Kelly, and will this be Reggie Williams' last game ever, number 57? Billups and Thomas are the corners. Fulcher and Dixon are the safeties. Reggie Williams has already announced his retirement, number 57, elected recently to the Cincinnati City Council. Will his season be extended at least one more week? It depends on the outcome tonight. Second and 12. Bengals showing corner blitz, and here they come. They love to do that. They pick up the corner, and Wilson hits Carter for a first down at the 37-yard line. Back-to-back -back first down for the Vikings, who come out smoking. Brady and Dixon in on the tackle, 17-yard game. There is A.C. Anthony Carter, his 59th catch of the season, a simple turn in. The ball's a little bit high from Wilson, but look at the good hands. Carter protecting the ball with his body goes up, and... Make no doubt about it, if the Vikings are going to make any noise offensively tonight, the big guy probably won't be Herschel Walker. It'll be Anthony Carter. They need one or the other to have a big night. And his motion, Gary Zimmerman, number 65, was moving. And our first flag of the night, Pat Haggerty is the referee. Ball start, 65. And it's against the man Offense. who will be going to the Pro Bowl, down. Gary Zimmerman. Out of Oregon in his fourth year, he and McDaniel, who line up side by side, will both be playing in Hawaii in February. Quite a feat, Al, for Randall McDaniel, who plays next to Gary Zimmerman. I mean, only his second year in the league, and to achieve that kind of notoriety, number 64 right there, from his peers and coaches around the NFC, that's, that's tough to do in as short a period of time as Randall McDaniel has done it. And they are two of seven Vikings who go to the Pro Bowl. First and 15, and through the middle, Herschel Walker taken down at the 38-yard line by Skip McClendon, number 72. 
McClendon, third year out of Arizona State. Jerry Burns. It's been a tough year for him, all things considered, for a team that is 9-6. and six. So much was expected of this team. I think more magazines, more supposed experts picked the Vikings to win it all than any other team in preseason. I can only assume by saying supposed experts that you weren't one of them. No, definitely not. <laughs> Boy, way to bail out on that one. None of the three of us. Second and ten as Rick Fenney takes it across the 35 to the 33-yard line. Everybody's a supposed expert at this time of year. Boomer Esaias in keeping that valuable right arm. I want to hear you get out of this. Well, yeah, you're right. It, it looked as if <laughs> I was going to say it's, it's sort of strange to see Boomer trying to keep the right elbow warm. <laughs> Keeping it, let's put it this way, under wraps. <laughs> With Sam White. I think Boomer's left-handed. <laughs> yeah. Still a valuable right arm. Right. Third, <laughs> third down and six. Well, that's what I mean by supposed expert. From the 33, out of the shotgun. Wilson throws. Carter makes the catch. And another first down as he takes it to the 19-yard line. So the Vikings, who were so inept offensively last week for the most part against Cleveland, come out shredding the Cincinnati defense initially tonight. Let's take a look at, it's not a pick exactly, but it's a little cross, and then Anthony Carter breaks it back out, going against Eric Thomas, and the key thing, Wade Wilson right on target. Wade Wilson went out of last week's game against Cleveland. Bruised knee, it's been puffy all week. But he has now picked out two receivers and connected on two key plays and gets the first down again to Anthony Carter. This is what they need, a big night from Carter to give them the explosive offense they know they've got, they just haven't been getting it. From the 19, off the fake to Walker, going back the other way, but too deep intended Whoa. for the open Steve Jordan. He'd gotten free, and that's the first time that Wilson has misfired tonight. He is three for four. He had beaten Reggie Williams, had Jordan. When you talk to a lot of coaches around the league, in a game of this magnitude, I think they'll tell you that they don't mind at all starting the game defensively. They don't mind throwing their defensive team out there because a lot of times you're a little tight offensively and it's tough to make things happen. But to watch Minnesota and the way that they're operating here on their initial offensive possession of the ball game, boy, that's certainly not the scenario tonight. They've opened this series like they've been playing like this is the middle of the third quarter. Second and 10 from the 19-yard line. Wilson throws. It's deflected and in and out of the hands of Ricky Dixon, who can't believe it. It was almost too easy for him. And the crowd's booing. They want a penalty. I think the crowd would like an interference penalty, but Ricky Dixon, and now he's gone to the end zone. He is gone if Dixon holds on to it. But again, you hear the reaction of the crowd. They're reacting to the scoreboard replay, waiting for interference. You be the judge. Here's Anthony Carter working against Lewis Billups. Oh, that's a good defensive play by Billups. From that angle, it looks like there was some contact before the ball got there, but he timed it pretty well. Third and 10. This is the ninth play of the opening drive. Pressure. Finney. Fulcher is able to drag him down by his ankles at the 14, and the Minnesota field goal unit with Rich Carlos will come in. So the Bengals stiffen after Minnesota had picked up three successive first downs. The ball is at the 13-yard line, so upcoming will be about a 31-yard attempt for Carlos, the longtime Bronco. Couldn't come to terms with Denver. Well, what a year he's having. Yep, he was at home for a couple of weeks at the outset of the season. Signed with Minnesota. Nice to leave Denver and kick indoors for a while, isn't it? Oh, he's made the most of it. Scribner holding. And Carlos's kick is perfect from 31. So on the opening drive, the Vikings control the ball for the first 5.30 of the opening period. 3-0 Minnesota. Holiday greetings from Budweiser.
The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. Announcing the biggest sale ever from Ford. Now, Ford gives you a $1,000 cash bonus on the number one selling cars and trucks in America. A $1,000 cash bonus from Ford on Taurus, Thunderbird, Probe, Tempo, Mustang, and Festiva. A $1,000 cash bonus on the best-selling Ford Escort and Ford Ranger, plus Bronco and Aerostar. Or choose 4.8% financing for 48 months on Taurus and Aerostar. It's the biggest sale ever from Ford, with a $1,000 cash bonus on many of America's best-selling cars and trucks. See your Ford dealer today. Okay, kids. Today we're going to demonstrate a discovery that could change your lives. Oh, really? It's the Nobel Prize winning discovery by IBM scientists of a more practical superconductor that carries electricity with no resistance and makes magnetic objects defy gravity. This discovery is fascinating not only scientists, but future scientists. Advances in superconductivity. IBM technology at work. Christmas night in Minneapolis. And by the way, outside, not that bad, all things considered. Got up into the 30s today, though it's uh, cooling off again tonight. Going down into the, uh, I think, 5 to 7 range, they said. What a contest here tonight for the best Santa Claus or the best Christmas wardrobe. Very colorful group and very loud. Their Vikings lead 3-0. Again, the winners to the playoffs. The losers, home. Carlos to kick off. John Hollifield and Richard Carey. Deep for the Bengals. Carey from the eight. Up to the 21-yard line. And we'll set the Cincinnati offense, the offense that erupted, exploded for 61 last week against the Oilers, led by Boomer Esiason. This year, again, averaging close to eight yards per pass attempt. And as you can see, better than a three-to-one touchdown-to-interception ratio. Brooks and Eric Ball, the UCLA rookie, are the running backs. McGee having a terrific season, and Brown the wideouts. Holman goes to the Pro Bowl. Munoz, Reimers, Kazerski, Montoya, and Walter up front. Munoz, of course, as always, to the Pro Bowl. Montoya as an alternate. From the 20, Esiason throws, and the catch is made by Eddie Brown out at about the 28-yard line, a couple of yards short of the first down. Minnesota tops in the league in defense. That means they've allowed the fewest yards in the league. And it's Noga, Thomas, Millard, and Dolman, that fearsome foursome up front. Deuce Bobbick spells Mike Merriweather, who's inactive tonight. He's hurt. Studwell and Berry are the other backers. Of those four, Lee and Browner go to the Pro Bowl. Second down. And a long two from the 28. A massive audibling at the line by Boomer. Changing everything. On second and two, the fake to ball. And Esaias and lost it to Brooks. And Brooks is out of bounds after picking up a first down to the 40-yard line. Run out of bounds there by Reggie Rutland, number 48. And you, hear, you hear the expression all the time, Frank, about it. This guy plays big. I, I don't know of a player in the league that that applies to more than James Brooks. Uh, here's a guy that even on that last play when he's by the sideline rather than just dance out of bounds, lowers the shoulder and takes on Reggie Rutland. This is a guy that plays 20 pounds heavier than he really is. J.B., James Brooks. See the Bengals changing once again. It takes... Great communication. They'll do a lot of hand signals to the wide receivers. Will Boomer Esiason. They'll go with their sugar offense, which is a short huddle near the ball. And when Denver, Minnesota tries to change personnel, they'll snap the ball. First and ten from the 40. Esiason with time and throws incomplete. Intended for Rodney Holman over the middle. And Henry Thomas put the pressure on number 97. A little Christmas greeting for Esiason. And Joey Browner was right there covering Rodney Holman. Esiason had to get rid of it under pressure. And there's that little huddle as we look at the replay once again. Now, Esiason with Holman covered at this point by Browner just has to fire it incomplete. Second and ten from the 40. Here's Brooks. Slip move to the outside, breaks the tackle, and picks up five to the 45-yard line. Studwell and Fullington in on the play. It'll be third and about five. 
You know, one of the best matchups tonight uh, might not be actually by the guys with helmets on. I think a lot of people would acknowledge that Sam Weiss is one of the great offensive minds in the game. But tonight he's matching wits with Floyd Peters, the defensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings, who might be the best defensive coordinator in the game of football. His Vikings are ranked number one, and it's a little chess game going on right now between those two. Third and a short five from the 45. Three nothing Minnesota. 8:25 to go in the opening quarter. They send Brooks in motion. Asiason looks the other way and throws short. Intended for Tim McGee. Running a little out pattern near midfield. Reggie Rutland covering. And the crowd responds to the Minnesota D. Now the D can take the credit, but that was just underthrown by Asias and McGee had the defender beat. He had the first down yardage and Asias and just underthrew it. Leo Lewis back to receive Lee Johnson's kick. Lewis standing at his own 12 yard line. High floating kick. Lewis at the 12 and runs it back to the 20. It's an eight yard return. Ed Brady makes the tackle. And with 8.06 to play in the first quarter at the Metrodome, it's Minnesota 3, Cincinnati nothing. say that by a certain age you fall into a predictable pattern of statistics. One spouse, 2.5 children, one three-bedroom home, and a typical four-door sedan. But what do they know? The 220 horsepower, 24-valve Ford Taurus SHO. Just when they thought they had you all figured out. Now get 4.8 financing for up to 48 months or a $1,000 cash bonus on Ford Taurus. Premium champagne. The product. The proving grounds. The results. STP gas treatment is the edge. It was like an operation in a heart of Berlin, and the heart was divided. I see. I called my mother in East Berlin. Then I called my sister in East Germany. It's wonderful around this time, especially around Christmas time. I mean, they can come and go. Uh, I have seen with my eyes the war is open, mother. Come, you can see me. What a wonderful world. It's a year-end salute to golf's champions of 89. Join Jack Whitaker for a look back at the championships of the USGA, Saturday on ABC Sports. Well, some of you may know this by now, but we are terribly saddened to report the death of Billy Martin in a one-car accident in upstate New York, the town of Fenton, New York. Martin living there, a one-car accident in his pickup truck, skidding down an icy road about four hours ago. The former manager of the New York Yankees dead on Christmas night in a one-car accident. As Herschel Walker picks up five on first down. So Martin, the longtime and several-time Yankee manager, also managed the Tigers and the A's and the Rangers, and for a while right here with the Minnesota Twins, dead at the age of 61. And now I'm mad at the problems he had over the years. One of the really, truly great people, a fiery competitor. We shared Yankee Stadium during my playing days. I saw him. About four weeks ago, we were cooking at a fundraiser for the March of Dimes. He was happy. He loved the circumstances up there and a truly sad situation. Second down and five for Minnesota from the 25-yard line as Rick Fenney fights his way for what might be a first down. As he had to get to the 30-yard line, and that is where he is. And we'll take a look and perhaps bring in the sticks as Pat Haggerty checks. And tells his first down at the 30-yard line.
Jerry Burns. One time the head coach of the University of Iowa. Longtime NFL assistant. From the 30 yard line, Finney picks up about six as he takes it out to the 36 yard line. And it's funny, <laughs> no pun intended, Finney is the guy who, uh, even after Walker came over in the trade from Dallas, has seen more and more action and is playing more and more a part of this Minnesota offensive scheme. And a guy who really just cracks the lineup here in Minnesota as a short yardage back. You see he's over 230 pounds and really just broke in carrying the ball down near the goal line or whenever they needed a tough yard. But 25 receptions on the year, over 500 yards rushing, a good all-around back. Second and four, and here's Walker. He fights for a first down, taking it out to the 41-yard line. So it's been the Finney and Walker show on this drive. The Vikings, by the way, are minus one running back, D.J. Dozier is hurt and he is on the inactive list tonight along with the linebacker Mike Merriweather. Difference between a Finney and a Walker if they ever pop through their Walker you know is gone. Finney is turn it could possibly turn it into a 10 12 15 yard game but Walker can break it all the way. It's just not his offense. He wasn't here in training camp. It's not the type of offense that you would design for Herschel Walker if you had him right through camp. From the 41, off the play fake. That buys Wilson a lot of time, and it buys a wide open Jordan for a first down at the 27 yard line. Well, you touched on it about buying a lot of time. When you can take a tight end and run him towards the sideline and then take him all the way around the corner, Leon White, a linebacker, is not going to be able to stay with a tight end who's got the swiftness of Steve Jordan. You cannot give him that much time. Good work by Wade Wilson, too, Dan. He looked off two receivers before he found Jordan. 32-yard pickup, and here's Finney taking it to the 25-yard line, a minimal gain. Well, in Pittsburgh tonight at the home of Dwayne Woodruff is Mr. Woodruff himself along with Keith Willis. I'm surprised you guys aren't dressed in full Viking regalia at this point. <laughs> but I know you got to be happy about the way things are going to this moment. Definitely. This is as close as uh, we could get to uh, the Viking purple. But uh, it looks like the game not is sure going pretty well. Not sure whether we're hearing this or not. Really? <laughs> well, tough for us to read lips. I don't know if you heard that either, but I know the... The Steelers to a man in Pittsburgh, obviously, rooting on the Vikings so they can keep their season alive. Benny on the screen takes it to the 20-yard line, about three yards short of the first down, where Tim Crumroy, number 69, makes the tackle. Ed Brady put the pressure that time on, and what a story Crumroy has become. You'll all recall the severely fractured leg in the Super Bowl, and he vowed to be back on opening day, and back he was. And he's still not back to, to, you know, the type of player that he was before. But the key thing for Tim Crumry is that he's better every week than he was the week before. And I see no reason, and neither do the Bengals coaches, that next year, by the beginning of the season, it shouldn't be the old Tim Crumry, the undisputed leader of that defensive team. Third and a long two, and David Fulcher has limped off the field, and it's Anthony Carter who has it busted up by Eric Thomas with perfect timing. Crowd wants a penalty, but there's no laundry on the field. Fourth down. When you get down there close, this is the kind of coverage you have to put on an Anthony Carter. It's dangerous because of Carter's speed, but look at Thomas. Now, he's played well for Cincinnati this year. Doesn't have the big numbers, doesn't have the interceptions, but he has given Sam White that kind of play, and that was superb defensive play on a tough wide receiver, Anthony Carter. I just throw him the flag. Looked like he had his left hand up on his neck before the ball was there. Very, very close. Close call. 37-yard attempt by Carlos. And this one is good. Good by plenty. But I've heard that the lack of flag makes it a great play. No laundry, it's a beauty. Yep. Two field goals by Carlos. 3.47 to go in the first quarter. 6 nothing Vikes. It began as a game. It turned into a battle. And now, it's out of control. But Bowl 2 
coming January 28th. This time, it's war. The facts speak for themselves. America's most popular copier is Canon. Call toll-free 1-800-OK-CANON. -OK Four-wheel drive? It means that you can drive in every direction at the same time. There's four steering wheels for driving. Anti-lock brakes? Yes, you can lock them so no one will steal them. Kids may not understand what Ford Aerostar's new four-wheel drive and standard rear anti-lock brakes are all about, but rest assured, their parents do. Now get 4.8 financing for up to 48 months or a $1,000 cash bonus on Ford Aerostar. Hi, I'm Joan London. And I'm Charles Gibson. From all of us here at Good Morning America, our warmest wishes during the holiday season. Have a happy and healthy New Year. Back in the Metrodome on Christmas night. Hope it's been a great holiday for you. Maybe you're kicking back right now and taking in the final game of the 1989 season, A Beauty. Win, you're in, lose, you're home. Simple as that. The playoffs have begun a week early for both of these clubs. How would you like to be a Steeler or a Green Bay Packer at this moment? Minnesota leading 6 to nothing. Carlos' is kick coming down and some confusion at the 10-yard line and finally covered up by Richard Carey as both Carey and Hollifield were back there and looking at each other and saying, uh, I thought you were going to take it. No, I thought you were going to take it. Somebody back there is supposed to be the holler man. <laughs> Obviously, nobody was, or somebody didn't hear it. And it just about cost the Bengals the turnover. It's a good thing. It is, deep in their own territory. It's a good thing Carey got down there on it. Well, you've got a rookie, Carey, and a first-year man, Hollifield. And now we've got major crowd noise. Cincinnati from the 14-yard line. Here's Brooks behind Ball. Cuts in off a of ball block. Picks up the first down. And James Brooks having another sensational year. Is out of bounds at the 31 and a flag down on Joey Browner well after the whistle and out of bounds. 17-yard gain and even more to be tacked on now. Well, that's one way to get the crowd to sit back in their seats a little Unfortunately, bit. Unfortunately, conduct number 47, hit out of bounds. So here you have Cincinnati making what could have been a catastrophic mistake on the kickoff return and how quickly it turns around. Look at the blocks to open it up. Ball with the beauty. James Brooks and then way out of bounds. Joey Browner unnecessarily throwing James Brooks to the ground. It doesn't look like a whole lot, but Browner knew where he was. Watch how far out of bounds he is. And he finishes it off. That's but there's one thing they've enforced this year is that. We've seen it almost every game. They are really watching that sideline. And, and look what wonder, happens. You don't want to take that chance this kind of game. That really hurts the ball club. Now they split Brooks to the right on first down from the 46-yard line. The play clock is down to five seconds. Down to three seconds. And they just do get it off. And they give it to Eric Ball. And he is stopped after a minimal game. The tackle is made by Mark Dusbabic after Al Noga made the initial contact. Dusbabic is the man out of Minnesota, the University of Minnesota, spelling the injured Mike Merriweather. And I think Al, we probably would be seeing Stanford Jennings in there if he were able to go tonight. Cruz back, he is on the field and in uniform, but Eric Ball, the rookie from UCLA, open tonight. Jennings ordinarily would line up in the two-back set with James Brooks. Second and eight. Pressure is on from Dolman, but he gets the pass away to Brooks. Another first down. There's a flag down. He takes it to the 35-yard line of Minnesota. There's a flag down back at the Cincinnati 42. Thrown by the line judge. And it's coming back. So negate the game by Brooks, what would have been an 18-yard pickup. The original line of scrimmage was the 47.
50. Number 75. Off finish. That's uh, Bruce Rymers, who is among the Bengals, who is fighting the flu tonight. Sam White's telling us before the game he'd keep a close eye on Rymers. Well, he's not only fighting the flu, but he's fighting Keith Millard as well. He'll give you the flu. Yeah. <laughs> if you weren't sick before the game started, he'll make you ill in a hurry. Puts it back to the 37-yard line, makes it second down, and 19 is a science and rifles one, and it's busted up, intended for McGee, and reaching around was Reggie Rutland to get a hand on it, and there's a flag down in the backfield. Oh, and McGee protesting because Rutland reached around, but he also had his other arm on the back of McGee. He really upset. Another penalty coming up against Cincinnati. Tripping. Another tripping call. Number 74. Offense behind. First, let's take a look at Rutland covering McGee. Watch the right arm. As he reaches around and uses the momentum of McGee to knock the ball away. Well, it would appear that the officials, uh, as far as the secondary is concerned, are going to let them play. But nothing's going to go un uh, unannounced or undetected on the offensive line. That time it was Brian Blados getting called for the trip. Back-to-back -back tripping call. The only time I've seen that is in the National Hockey League. <laughs> Third down and 19 from the 37-yard line. No two minutes in the box here. No. And the Vikings, and here they come. And were they drawn? Yeah, I, well, what happened is Millard flinched, and I think he got Reimers to come out of his stance. Ball start, number 75. Sam Weiss told us down on the field that he got hit with the flu bug last night, and Bruce Reimers was one of the worst. C. Millard goes first, but he causes the rocking forward and the flinching by Reimers. And, boy, it's terribly unfair for an offensive lineman. That guy across from you can jump, Frank, but you've got to stay still. Yeah, and Dan, you know, too, Millard, he is so quick off the ball. Now, Reimers has been watching films of Millard, who just absolutely times it out beautifully with that ball. And when Millard flinched that time, he went with him, and, of course, they're going to call it on the offense. Oh, here's Millard all the way outside on Munoz. Third and 24. They have to get to the Minnesota 44 for a first down. And Brooks escapes, gets out past the 30, and Brooks to the 39-yard line. James Brooks turns absolutely nothing into a minimal gain anyway as he escaped Grimm at first. Noga almost had him in the backfield, and then James Brooks is able to finally get it out to the 39-yard line. Boy, what a job Brooks has done this year. They lost Icky Woods, the 1,000-yard rusher from a year ago, their leading rusher, and Brooks has taken up the slack, and that, that's just a great athlete performing for you. Turns a loss of six or seven yards into a big pickup, and Cincinnati will at least be able to punt from better field position. Lee Johnson to boot it. Leo Lewis back to accept it. It's a low line drive. Could be a decent run back as Lewis at the 22 exploits it by bringing it out to the 39. So a low line drive kick results in a 17 yard return. And now that's a great play by Lewis, even if he doesn't return it anywhere. Just handle the ball. Don't let it go towards your own goal line. 140 to play, first quarter. Grab a bucket and mop. Scrub the bottom and top. There is nothing so clean as my burger machine. With a broom and a brush. Clean it up for the rush. Before you open the door. Or to shine on the floor. When we finish one then. Soldier Field, Chicago. Over 300 dead batteries and one diehard battery. Our most powerful ever jump starts every one. Die Hard.
more power when you need it most. Have you ever wondered what a baggage handler might take on vacation? Well, everyone should take. Samsonite's glutton for punishment. The Syracuse Orange men have Georgia on their minds. They head down to Atlanta to tangle with a ferocious Bulldog defense in the Peach Bowl, Saturday on ABC. Uh, your shoes down. Left to right in Green Bay, a live picture. Don Mikowski, the great quarterback, John Spagnola, Chuck Cecil, and Brian Noble. They've congregated at Brian Noble's house. Brian, do you have any message for Boomer Esiason? Yeah, you guys, you guys got to beat the Minnesota Vikings. Don't beat yourselves. Just keep on plugging away, and uh, things will turn out all right. We got confidence in you guys. Brian, whichever way it goes, congratulations on a great year. The package is definitely back. Oh, thank you very much. We appreciate it. All right, we'll be back in contact with the guys in Green Bay and the Steelers as well in Pittsburgh from the 39-yard line. Wilson hits Carter a first down at the 50-yard line. An 11-yard pickup. Eric Thomas with the coverage. And the Vikings are at midfield in the waning moments of the first quarter. Talk about a burglar making the catch and getting out of the way as quickly as you can. Anthony Carter knows there's nothing but bad news at the end of this. Catch it, get down, disappear. That's, that's like a guy who has his hand into the jewel case and grabs the necklace and is gone in about an eighth of a second. Catch Some, it and get out. Somewhere <laughs> hovering back there is a guy named David Fulcher. All 237 pounds of him, and it doesn't look as though Anthony Carter comes off limping, and he has had a lot of hamstring problems this season. From the 49-yard line, here is Finney, and he can't turn inside a Herschel Walker block and is stopped after a short pickup at roughly the 48-yard line. There is Carter. Meanwhile, Fulcher is also shaken up, and he is on the Cincinnati sideline at the moment, and Barney Bussey is in, spelling him at strong safety. Hard to have a better year than David Fulcher is having for the Bengals. Eight interceptions, four fumble recoveries, leads the league with 12 takeaways and deservedly going to Hawaii to the Pro Bowl. A big man in the secondary. Nip three off Houston last week. Second and nine. Wilson off a roll, throws, and the catch is made at the 35-yard line by Hassan Jones, a first down. He turned outside Lewis Billups and brought it in with 14 ticks remaining on the clock in the first quarter. This offensive team from Minnesota starting with their coordinator, Bob Schnelker, on through their quarterback, Wade Wilson, spilling over to Herschel Walker, and everyone involved. It's taken a lot of criticism this year. Part of it comes from the fact that their defensive team has been so dominating, but if anything has been to blame here in Minnesota, it has been their lack of offensive production, but you would never guess that the way they've played so far in the first quarter. First and 10 from the 35-yard line, and here's Walker piling forward for four on what will be the final play of the opening quarter. Crumry and McClendon converge on the tackle. So Wilson goes over to talk it over with Burns and Schnucker. And the first quarter is gone on Christmas night in Minneapolis with a score. Minnesota 6, Cincinnati nothing. ABC's Monday Night Football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Are you off that phone yet? In a minute! With MCI Primetime, this 25-minute call at 9 p.m. Boston to Philadelphia costs 26% less than AT&T's regular evening rate. Are you off that phone yet? In a minute! And Primetime lets you save no matter how long you talk. Are you off that? Yes, I'm off. Bye. So the choice that's right is the choice on the right, especially if you really like talking on the phone. MCI Primetime. Real savings 24 hours a day. Call now, get one month free. It began as a game. It turned into a battle. And now, it's out of control. Bud Bowl 2. Coming January 28th. This time, it's war. This is ABC.
Idaho quarterback John Freeze puts on quite a show today. Highlights after the game. Monday Night Football. Brought to you by the Chrysler Corporation. Introducing our 1990 cars, minivans, and trucks. Metrodome, Minneapolis. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff on Christmas night. We start the second quarter. And on second and seven for Minnesota, it's Rick Finney fighting his way forward for a first down to the 21-yard line behind a block by Kirk Loudermilk. Minnesota dominating and dominating in time of possession and dominating the numbers in the first quarter as you take a look at them. Well, you know, a lot of times the numbers like this don't really tell the story. You look at the difference there in time of possession, an eight-minute difference. But they are telling us one thing right now, and that is right now the Vikings are controlling the line of scrimmage, and Cincinnati is going to have to compensate somehow. Somehow there's going to have to be more run support, more pressure on the quarterback. If that involves bringing up an eighth man, they're going to have to do it. And look right there, a lot of people close to the line. First and ten from the 21-yard line. Fenny makes the catch and gets spun down by Xander after a pickup of one to the 20. But it's a blitz by Reggie Williams there in Cincinnati making an adjustment. They're going to have to flood the line of scrimmage. Reggie came on the blitz, forces Wilson to maybe get it out there a half second before he wants to and disrupts the timing of the play. The Bengals are in a position on the field now where they're going to have to take some chances. What a great performer over the years now in his 14th season. This could be his final game. His 206th regular season game for Reggie Williams. Not a good performer on the field, but a good one off. Second and eight from the 19-yard line. Bikes on top, six to nothing. Wilson fires into the end zone and broken up at the goal line. Intended for Hassan Jones and Lewis Billups with a little salute after breaking the play up. I don't know who he thinks he's saluting. <laughs> his heart is right in his throat for the moment. I mean, <laughs> that was just, just barely getting there. Let's take a look once again. Hassan Jones, who is the good move man doesn't have the speed of Anthony Carter now watch Phillips he has to get back into this play he just does get there and the crowd watching the replay thought that he got there a little early but he did save it well they've been the, the crowd has had a little justification but that's that's just a great play by Phillips we'll I mean, take a bow on that one yeah that's not even close to interference third down and eight from the 19 yard line that's Leo Lewis in motion. He stays in the block, and they give it to Walker on an inside handoff, and he takes it to the 11, and that's very close to a first down. He cut off a block by Randall McDaniel, and very close to a first. We're just talking about huge holes up front, though. I mean, this is a situation where the guys in the purple jerseys are just eradicating the Bengal defensive line and linebacker. Todd Kalis, the right guard, makes a fine block. See Kalis, number 69, as he blocks down on David Grant, pins him to the inside. Zimmerman comes around, makes a block on Scow, and boy, what a nice-looking hole up the middle in the lead block. Boy, Jesse Clark, this is just a dominating effort by the Vikings up front. They appear to be short of the first down. They've already sent in three tight ends. They are that much shy of the first, almost a full yard. At the 11-yard line, you lead six to nothing, and they're going to go for it. Cincinnati came into tonight's game 27th in the league against the rush, the numbers of yards that they had given up. This is not lost on the offensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings, Bob Schnelker. So up they come in the eye. They have not been good at stopping teams when they get down close either. And they give it to the up back. And he picks up the first down with a lot to spare, taking it to the eight and setting up the first and goal. But if you're going to go on fourth and short and you've got a couple of pro bowlers to the left side and Randall McDaniel and Gary Zimmerman, why not follow them? And this is, again, it's I, you love to give credit to the backs, but look what happens up front. Look how they are blown out. Zimmerman, 65, McDaniel, 64. Novoselsky coming in motion. I mean, this is just a case where Cincinnati is getting run out of the ballpark on their defensive line. When did you love to give credit to the backs? Huh? Let's go back over that. <laughs> well, you know, that's when you don't get hit until you've gotten where you're supposed to be. First and goal, and Wilson winds up on his back under severe pressure led by Carl Zander and dumps it off incomplete. 
I mean, this is a game story right now, Frank, because this is not a real big defensive wall for Cincinnati. Even guys like Xander aren't all that big at 230 pounds. Watch Carl Xander, number 91, as he loops to the outside. He's the guy that forces Wilson into throwing a ball that rolls right off his fingers, and Wilson and the Vikings got very lucky. That's a ball that just hung up there. If there's a Bengal anywhere near there, that's an interception. 11th play of this drive coming up, second down and goal from the eight. 12-33 to play in the half. Herschel Walker just inside the five. It will be third and goal. Ricky Dixon comes up to make the tackle. Walker this season, there it is, averaging 3.7 yards a rush. The league average is exactly four. By contrast, you take a look at James Brooks on the other side. He's averaging 5.6. So Walker, that's classic Walker, though. He's a pecker and a looker. He's not a just a buller. He's looking for somewhere to go. And when you get down that close, quite frankly, you, you find a little bit of a gap. You put your head down and you try to make a bigger hole. They come up tight on third and goal and send Novoselsky in motion. And Wilson throws it halfway to Adina. Intended, I suppose, for Darrell Ingram, who was the closest Viking, but he was about 12 yards away. Boy, and look at Wade Wilson. That look, he's yelling over to the bench. I don't know if he's yelling at one of the coaches or whatever, but Wade Wilson incensed about. Either the route run, and that's Bob Schnelker, his offensive coordinator, he goes right to. And Schnelker ain't looking all that happy with Wade Wilson either. And that's so, a scene we've seen repeated a few times in we recent We saw weeks. that repeated a couple of years ago, and all of a sudden Wilson well, was sitting down. This is a pressure cooker here in Minnesota. As I told you earlier, this offensive team's been getting a lot of gas. 22-yard field goal attempt is just inside the upright, but Pilas is 3-3. Three to three. And he has, despite missing the first two games this season, 112 points in 1989. And that's a career high for the longtime Denver Bronco. He's the difference on the scoreboard. It's nine to nothing. When I played football, I crunched quarterbacks. But now I crunch these, JB's pigskins. The new pork rind still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. There's never been an offer like this before. The guaranteed rebate. Now you can get $1,000 on a 1990 Plymouth Voyager, Plymouth Laser, Chrysler LeBaron Convertible, or a New Yorker Fifth Avenue, even an Imperial. If the rebate goes up during this model year, we'll pay you the difference. The guaranteed rebate from Chrysler Plymouth. No other car company has ever done that. Offer ends soon. You ever run up against a tough sinus cold? As tough as it gets, maximum strength Gristan is tougher. To sweep away congestion, pressure, and pain. And it won't make you drowsy. When you can't call in sick, call on Dristan. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. We have four children, and our last two children, we uh, actually scheduled their birth around Monday night football. So we would go to the hospital, and we'd, the doctor and I were listening to the Monday night football game as my wife was uh, laboring in pain, about to deliver our third and our fourth children. And I can still remember at the birth of our fourth child, Kramer, that was after the Broncos scored their first touchdown against the San Francisco 49ers on Monday Night Football. Our 20th anniversary season winding up tonight in Minneapolis, and certainly Steve Largent through those 20 seasons has provided more than his share of thrills. Uh, what memories he's given us. Nine to nothing Minnesota as Carlos puts it in the air. And the kick comes down to the four-yard line. And it's Richard Carey running it back out to the 20. And a flag goes down at the end of the play. You know who one of the happiest guys in this ballpark is, though, right now? It's Sam Weiss. Because he's looked at his club not play well at all. He's seen Minnesota go up and down this field. And all they have on the scoreboard is nine points. And now he has seen another penalty to be assessed against his club as well. Holding number 87. 
on the return, half the distance. That's Jim Riggs. But how many times have we seen it over the years where you have those opportunities early, you don't capitalize on, on them, and look what happens later in a ball game. And there is no way you can say the Vikings have capitalized for how well they have moved the ball. First and 10, Cincinnati from the 10-yard line. And that sort of sums it up on the Minnesota sideline. They've had the ball almost the entire game, and yet they've settled for only three field goals. Little dump off past the ball, and it's tackled by Ray Berry back at the eight yard line. After the Walker trade, it gave Berry, who is no relation to the New England coach, a chance to start, and he has really made the most of it. Jesse Solomon, of course, going on to Dallas. Ray Berry was a backup and middle linebacker, moved out to the right side, and he's become an integral part of that defense, the best in the league. Second and 11 from the nine. 11 minutes to play in the half. 9 nothing Minnesota. Vikings win. They go to the playoffs. Green Bay's out. Bengals win. They go to the playoffs. Pittsburgh would be out. Play clock is down to four. And Esiason trips and gets sacked back at the four-yard line. Chris Dolman will get credit for it. He's earned his share. He got some help right there, but nonetheless, for Dolman, that will be number 18. You never know when the center quarterback comes away from the center like that whether or not he was stepped on as he pulls back. It looked like his right foot was caught, could have been stepped on. And the Bengals without a huddle now, going right to the air, and Esiason with a flag being thrown has it broken up at the 50-yard line intended for McGee, but there's a flag well away from the play itself on the near side. Bengals that time going without a huddle. Trying to catch Minnesota changing. And they'll discuss it. Pat Haggerty will tell us. Again, the penalty was away from where the play eventually wound up at midfield. Of course, the whole theory of this offense is to catch the defensive team in a change. 12 men on the field. They did. Defense. Uh-huh. That's exactly what happened. The Bengals, by going without the huddle, and that's a penalty that the, the Bengal opponents have made time and time and time again this season. And the rule is hard and fast. You have 12 men out on that field, even if they are near the sideline, if they are stepping off the field. There's still 12 men on the field. Well, the smart thing the Bengals did, though, is they knew they had a free play. Why not go ahead and go deep? Go for the home run. Mm -hmm. You know the worst that's going to happen is you'll pick up your five yards and get another whack at it. Third and call it 12 from the eight-yard line. And there's Boomer calling the play. Brooks in motion. And Esiason under pressure throws into double coverage and has it picked off by Darrell Fullington at the 38-yard line. Boomer tried to force one in between two defenders, and the result is a Minnesota interception. Well, he's got Al Noga, number 99, coming towards him, but the ball looked like it fluttered off of Boomer's hand. It looked somehow that Boomer didn't get anything on that ball at all. I mean, he wasn't hit when he threw it. Now watch Noga, number 99, the bottom of your screen, working against Plato, suspend to the inside. Blados tries to trip him again, but still Boomer wasn't hit when he threw, but yet the ball really floated off his hand. And the coverage was great. There was nothing there. The ball at the 37-yard line. Here's Wilson going right to the air, finds Carter in the scene. Carter running parallel along the 20, out of bounds at the 13-yard line. What a block by Hassan Jones. Pair of blocks. Steve Jordan very wisely pulled up or he would have flipped and that would have come back. Good move by the Pro Bowler Steve Jordan and then Hassan Jones. You got that right, Frank. Great move Carter by Jordan. Big block. And Anthony Carter goes over 1,000 yards, second consecutive year. Again, no Bengal anywhere near Wade Wilson allowing Anthony to run the crossing pattern. 
And this is just all Anthony Carter until right there. There's Jordan. There's Jones. And it's first down from the 11. A deep drop and a screen is set up. And the catch is made by Fenny, who breaks tackles and scores the touchdown. And there are the Steelers, Chief Willis, Wayne Woodruff. They're thinking about going to Houston. Eric Thomas, the quarterback, had the chance to make the play. A slim one it was. He took a shot at him. And now we know why Finney's in there. Good, strong running when it, once he got inside the five-yard line. Kind of the story of the Bengal season in microcosm. Last week, 61-7. to And right now, 0-16. I touched on it at the top of the show, Al. They scored 56 points during the season. Came back and scored seven. They scored in the 40s another week. Came back and scored seven the following week and lost both those games. And they're off to another horrible start as Rick Finney develops, continues to develop into an all-around back and some sad faces in Packerland. A rebate is a rebate is a rebate, right? Wrong. Now, for the first time, Chrysler Plymouth, Dodge, Jeep, and Eagle offer the guaranteed rebate on the world's best-selling 1990 minivans, convertibles, and Jeep Cherokees. If the rebate goes up this model year, we'll pay you the difference. No other car company has ever done that. The guaranteed rebate from Chrysler. Offer ends soon. I've never been that much of a cereal leader, or even breakfast for that matter. But then I read two or three different articles about oat bran. And I thought to myself, why would you not eat this stuff? Medical reports have shown oat bran can be important to your good health. Kellogg's Common Sense Oat Bran has more oat bran than any leading ready-to-eat cereal. You know, I get up 15 minutes early just so I can do this. Common Sense Oat Bran, a sensible thing to do. Bud Light. Hey! It won't fill you up, never lets you down. Uh -huh. hey! The pomp, the pageantry, the people, all part of America's New Year's Day celebration. The 101st Tournament of Roses Parade live next Monday on ABC. Sam White and the Bengals have watched Minnesota control the ball for four drives, resulting in three field goals and a touchdown. Meanwhile, the Bengals can't get anything going. It's 16 to nothing with 10 minutes to play in the half. Richard Carey from the two-yard line takes it back out to the 13. And the Bengals can't get anything going on their kickoff returns tonight. Vikings again do an outstanding job in coverage. Brent Novoselsky leads the charge. End of the year championships of the USGA. We'll review it for you Saturday. Curtis Strange winning U.S. Opens back-to-back, -back, and he'll highlight that show. Two Eastern, one Central, three Pacific. We've got the Peach Bowl, Georgia against Syracuse coming your way. That's a Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific from Atlanta. From the 14-yard line, Ball is the man in motion. And on a draw, here's Brooks. Out to about the 17-yard line, Chris Dolman makes the tackle along with some help from Henry Thomas. Dolman now with 18 sacks. They've got a good individual race going. Dolman has 18. Millard has 18. And Tim Harris of the Green Bay Packers is sitting in Green Bay tonight wondering if his lead will hold up. He has 19 and a half this season, number one in the NFL. Second and seven. It's Brown in motion. Esiason pressured, sacked at the four by Henry Thomas. <laughs> he doesn't get many of those. Well, yeah. 
This, it, this is just a remarkable front four. You know, Noga's in double digits with 11 and a half sacks. That's number eight for Henry Thomas. And again, what could be sweeter than to be a defensive lineman and play for Floyd Peters? Everywhere this man is coached, his front fours have led the league in sacks. And again, regardless of who they line up, it seems the system works. There's Floyd, and this guy is going to be a head coach in this league before much longer. Third down and 19 from the five-yard line. And looking for room and finding none is James Brooks. So they can't even give Lee Johnson any extra room. Keith Millard leading the fired up, the charged up Viking front. And this crowd going wild because their Vikings lead 16 to nothing. Thoroughly dominating the game right now. From where I come from, Frank, this is called a good old-fashioned butt whipping right oh, here. Oh, they're kicking oh. around, aren't they? Oh. Millard, of course, reading the fact that they probably are not going to put it in the air. Third down and 20. Figures it's going to be the draw. He is raining all over James Brooks on that. Whoa. Lee Johnson from the back of the end zone. Leo Lewis near midfield and contact made up front. Encroachment defense. And that will give Johnson some extra rule. It won't come close to giving him a first down. It's fourth and 20. Well, at least he'll be able to go back to his ordinary depth. That he couldn't do from where he was a moment mm -hmm. ago. As David, David Cincinnati is still going to stay yeah. in tight with their punt formation. That's poor David Huffman, a guard. Has to play on the punt return team. He's saying, come on, I don't want to be here. I'm, I want to be on the other side of the ball. They won't get near the coverage from that formation. High snap. Johnson comes down with it, and it's a good deep kick. Leo Lewis at his own 40-yard line. For the Bengal 40. Still inbounds, and finally run out of bounds at about the 15. You know, it was only a week ago that Cincinnati was doing this to Houston. Oh, how long a week must seem. That's Lewis now. He takes it straight up. Ordinarily, you'd think that he's going to take it straight up, get the most he can get out of it, but he sees something to the outside now. Watch him pick up the picket line. The blue jerseys go flashing by, and Leo Lewis down the sideline. Very heady return on the part of Lewis. 51-yard kick, but a 45-yard return. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. Walker can't get on track. Stop at the line of scrimmage. The Packers, of course, in Green Bay can only sit and watch and hope. Sensational season for Green Bay, but here's a team that winds up 10-6 and six and could be home next Sunday. Green Bay needs this game to get to halftime. I mean, Sam Weiss has to go in and work some serious magic at halftime for the Cincinnati ball club, and I don't mean Don Mikowski. Second and 10 from the 15-yard line. Walker, and he's taken down by Williams, and there's a penalty marker down. Frank, it's against Minnesota. You've been a ball carrier in this league for a long time. Am I wrong? When Herschel Walker is going parallel to the line of scrimmage, the defense has already won. Well, they do. I mean, he is not a cutback runner whatsoever you have to give him a he runs from tackle Holy, to tackle it was 64 offense i mean great speed yeah, does speed. not necessarily power but you but put him on the outside he will not bring it back the pursuit will get him all the time if you're going to use him that way you got to protect his backside you've had to do it yourself as an offensive tackle you get it back who just doesn't have that cutback ability he does not have it he has great talent but that's not one of them he just does not have the ability to plant that outside foot and break break it upfield and accelerate it just doesn't have it Bengals in their history have never won a road game since coming into the league 22 years ago when trailing by 15 or more points an ominous note when they're down by 16 at second and 20 and Wilson throws to the far side intended for Carter and he was covered on the play you know a funny thing the local paper made a, a, a big issue out of the fact that the Vikings have 
folded in the fourth quarter this season. That was the lead story today. And when you look ahead, the Vikings have had a lot of leads. And one promising note for the Bengals would be the fact the Vikings in the fourth quarter this season have been outscored 106 to 43. The way so, it's going, it's going to be a lot of creases in this fold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Better watch your step, Al, or you'll win a hype award. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We've all won a few of those. <laughs> Third down and 20 from the 25-yard line. Whether we wanted to or not. Yeah. Wilson Whoa. tipped and incomplete intended for Carter, and Lewis Billups decked Wilson, and Billups is shaken up on the play. Just a game of numbers, and the Vikings, with all the receivers and the patterns, just did not have the blockers to pick up Billups. He had a straight shot at... Wilson and it is Billups who is slow getting up. Yeah, he comes on a corner blitz and he's unaccounted for. He'll come from the top. Watch Lewis Billups clear the crowd and boy, he puts a good one on Wade Wilson. And yet, I think maybe he underestimates the size of Wade Wilson. Wade 6'3 and close to 215 pounds. And Lewis Billups fights to get up around 180 and, and looks like he's working that right leg a little gingerly. So Billups comes off. Carlos, meanwhile, comes on. And you'll recall Carlos kicked seven field goals in a game against the Rams this season. He has 29 at the moment. He missed the first three games this year prior to signing with Minnesota. And yet he's tied with San Francisco's Mike Kofer and Washington's Chip Lowmiller for the league lead. And if he keeps this up, he may get a dozen tonight. I may go for that award, too. But again... Cincinnati dodging another bullet. They had a first down at the 15-yard line. Now they're going to have to settle for a long field goal attempt. And even down 16 and nothing. This thing could have been blown totally out of here by now, and it hasn't been. Viking team record is 30 by Fred Cox, so Carlos tries to tie that mark, and he is right on the money tonight. Well, Cincinnati may have avoided... The bullet to the heart, but right now they're sure bleeding from a lot of open wounds. They better get the fife and drum out. 6.42 to go in the first half. It's 19 to nothing, Minnesota. Volcano erupts in South Carolina classroom. Now let's go inside. IBM is helping teachers teach and bring subjects to life with courseware that helps children learn English, math, science, and more. It looks hot, but it's cold. Courseware that complements a teacher's curriculum from kindergarten through high school. Hi, very good. Avalanche hits Florida Elementary School. This is really something, you know? You should stick around for the moonwalk. Hmm? Yeah. There's never been an offer like this before. The guaranteed rebate. Now you can get $1,000 on a 1990 Plymouth Voyager, Plymouth Laser, Chrysler LeBaron Convertible, or a New Yorker Fifth Avenue, even an Imperial. If the rebate goes up during this model year, we'll pay you the difference. The guaranteed rebate from Chrysler Plymouth. No other car company has ever done that. Offer ends soon. You don't have to be crazy about home projects to buy a Black & Decker cordless screwdriver or cordless screwdriver plus. You just have to have a screw loose. and cash cleaning up crime together rated r now playing at a theater near you the longest game in the history of the national football league was played christmas day 1971 82 minutes 40 seconds in the second overtime garo yapremian kicked that 37 yard field goal spoiling an otherwise unbelievable individual performance by the chiefs head total act the Miami Dolphins beat the Chiefs 27 to 24. That was an AFC playoff game. What people forget, there was an NFC playoff game that very same day, Christmas 71, here, when the Vikings were playing in Bloomington at Old Metropolitan Stadium against Dallas. And it's the last time the NFL played a game on a Christmas day. Richard Carey returning this carless kick back out to the 23-yard line. 
And meanwhile, in Green Bay, uh, not very happy right now in the home of Brian Noble. Uh, Don Mikowski, uh, what can you say about this one so far? Well, uh, the game's still early. We've got, we got a whole second half to play, and uh, hopefully uh, Cincinnati will come back in Green Bay fashion and be a second-half team. <laughs> <laughs> they have the weapons, don't they? They do. Uh, we got to get it going, though. All right, we'll find out what happens here on this drive from the 23-yard line as Esiason dumps one off for Eric Caddis, the tight end, and he's bumped out of bounds by Ray Berry out at the 39-yard line. So they begin with about a 14-yard pickup. It's good news and bad news for Cincinnati. One, they're used to playing this hurry-up style of offense. It's almost their regular offense. The bad news is, because they're such a strong running game, the best part of their passing game is play-action passing, and that's something right now that Minnesota can afford to disregard. They can sit back and play the pass and not come up and bite on the play-action. First and 10, Cincinnati from the 39-yard line. Inside handoff, Brooks escapes. Takes it out to the 46. I just, I just love watching James Brooks play. Here's a guy over 1,000 yards, and again, we mentioned before, 5.6 yards per carry. He's been terrific through the years. First San Diego, and there he is. He's the only player in this decade twice going over 1,000 yards rushing with a 5-plus average. And the 5-plus average is the key. I mean, those are Jim Brown-type averages when you get over 5 yards per carry. Second and three, that was a seven-yard gain, and going for Brown, and he's blanketed. Carl Lee staying right with him. It'll be third down and three. Well, next Monday, the beginning of the new year, the new decade, January 1st, 1990, we have a bowl fest for you. Illinois, Virginia starts it at 1.30 Eastern time. That's the Florida Citrus Bowl. Then... Pasadena, Bo Schembechler wrapping up his career. Michigan against USC in the Rose Bowl. And our gang will be down in New Orleans for the USFNG Sugar Bowl that night. Alabama against Miami. Third down and three. Pressure on Esiason, but he gets it away. Finds the open man. That's Eddie Brown for a first down. He gets wrestled down, and a flag goes down. Travis Curtis and Barry, and Barry may have grabbed a face mask. No, they're going to call it against Cincinnati. McGee can't believe it. We may have... Illegal push in the back, number 85 on the run. Yep, it's Tim McGee. He's right in front of the play, attempting to help Eddie Brown out. McGee's going to be number 85. Let's watch him. He's working man coverage against Reggie Rutland. All right, now, right about now, he's looking back, and he sees that Eddie Brown makes the catch. And they're calling the push from behind. Whoa. That's uh, that's calling it pretty tight. That's calling it pretty tight. And uh, I think Tim McGee has a right to be a little upset about that. That That is a, uh, that's a call that I, I don't see it. I just don't see it. Unless something happened before our cameras were on it, but I watched McGee all the way down the field, and that, that had to be it. Bengals still picked up the first down. It's first and 10 at the 44. The play clock is down to four. The play clock to one as Esiason gets it off. Protection breaks down, and he dumps it into the umpire. Al Noga forced that issue, and the closest receiver was Neil Garib. So very close to being in the grasp of Noga. Crowd wanted the call. Noga wanted the call. What an important drive for Cincinnati. Five minutes remaining here in the second quarter that they can go in with something on the scoreboard. They're an explosive team that has been totally dominated thus far, but if they can put something up there, and we've watched them before, you know how quickly they can score. Those outside guys, Eddie Brown, Tim McGee. Brooks makes the catch and gets bumped out of bounds by Travis Curtis. <laughs> and Brooks looking at Curtis as if to say, huh, some hit. Yeah, remember I stand I, up, you go down. I love I your description. He plays big, Dan. He plays big. <laughs> he only goes about 180 pounds. Yeah. You, yeah, you tell that to Travis Curtis. Great leverage, great timing, and everything he does. <laughs> Third and five, Cincinnati at the 39. Five minutes to play in the half. 19 to nothing, Minnesota. To Stanford Jennings. 
And Jennings slipping a tackle and fighting to the 34 and might have a first down. Carl Lee makes the tackle, and Jennings, who will be used very sparingly tonight, need in the kidney last week against Houston, and he was very questionable coming into the game tonight. Hey, that, that's a superb play by Boomer. I mean, oh, an offensive line on a screen pass, they, they have two roles. One is to hit the defensive lineman hard enough to stop his rush. Then you move out to block. On that one right there, I mean, the Viking defensive line is on Boomer before he has any idea what's going on. And completing the pass to Jennings, fine work by Boomer Esiason. And then a nice effort by Jennings by himself to get the first down. And the way he completed it, right in stride to Jennings. Yeah. And that probably gave Jennings the, Jennings the impetus to get that first down, which he did. I don't believe that, uh, that Boomer thought that they were going to be in his face that quickly. Four and a half minutes to go. Looking ahead, the Bengals with all of their timeouts. The ball is at the 34-yard line, first and ten. Movement on the right side. But the Vikings get back. Play clock down to three. And Esiason to Holman over the middle, but leads him a bit too much. Rodney had sprung free momentarily with Joey Browner providing the coverage. Second and ten. Uh, it would have had to have been dead perfect. That's a good defensive play by both Joey Browner and Travis Curtis coming back from the free safety spot. <laughs> Joey Browner uh, on his way to another Pro Bowl. Of course, setting off a lot of controversy as a holdout early in the year here. Here's what I like to watch. Here's Anthony Munoz, Chris Dolman, two Pro Bowlers. Watch the spin back to the inside by Dolman. Munoz right in his face. Perfect protection by the nine-time Pro Bowler. To see the offensive line of the decade or not. Second Clearly. and ten. Here's Ball, and he can't get out of the backfield as the tackle is made by Ken Clark, number 71. One of the reserve defensive linemen. You talk about dwelling in anonymity. A reserve defensive lineman from Minnesota does just that with their foursome. Well, Kenny Clark had a lot of great years with the Philadelphia Eagles. A lot of good years there and just has kept himself in good shape and Floyd Peters again a, a coach that likes a veteran player. Third and ten. Esiason going deep for Brown who makes the catch. Touchdown. Exactly what the Bengals needed. Brown had gotten by Carl Lee. They celebrate in Green Bay as the Bengals get on the board here. A 34-yard touchdown pass from Esiason to Brown. Oh, and you have to say it again. That was so important to the Cincinnati Bengals. They had been mauled thus far. You knew they had the potential to break loose, and this is Eddie Brown, who had an ordinary year for Eddie Brown this season. A great year a year ago, but he beats a Pro Bowl corner in Carl Lee at the corner of the end zone. Actually, Frank, he did beat Lee, but Lee gave him the inside and expecting some help from Travis Curtis, and Curtis was late getting there. That's late support from the safety to the inside that allows Eddie Brown to make that catch. Jim Breach sends it through the uprights, the extra point, with 3.31 remaining in the first half. Those three field goals do not look that big at this point. Mm -mm. Sixth touchdown reception of the season for Eddie Brown. Watch the right side. You see Curtis, number 49. He's just a little late getting over there. Not able to break in on that play. And Cincinnati, as they can do as easily as any team in the league, scores quickly. Eddie Brown, out of that class of 1985. Jerry Rice, Al Toon. First round draft picks, all of them. This year, only 46 receptions into tonight. A great year a year ago with eight 100-yard games. He only had one this season. That was last week. And keep in mind, that came on a third and ten. A key third and ten. In a situation like this, that would be a very key play. Third and ten with three and a half to go, and you're down by 19. And that's exactly what Cincinnati needed. Dan touched on something uh, very important to Cincinnati. That is, they have not been able to get their running game going, and so much of their passing game does come off the play action. If you can't run, they don't pay attention to the run. It's hard to make it work. Well, Cincinnati is going to have to do something they haven't done all night, and that's hold their ground at the line of scrimmage when the Vikings have the ball. The Viking offensive line and their running game has really been controlling it. Lee Johnson to put it in the air. 
Herschel Walker takes it about three yards deep and he'll settle for bringing it on to the 20 yard line. From there will the Vikings begin their next drive and they have all of their timeouts left in the first half. Going back to Herschel for a moment. This man can do so many great things for you. He's a tremendous receiver either inside or outside. He came here when the Vikings offense was set and it was designed for Alfred Anderson. It was designed for B.J. Dozier and that is quick cutting plays. Nothing from the deep eye formation, which Herschel Walker is very at home with, very comfortable with, because he grew up on it and has always played it. But he has made the most out of what he's been able to do in the Minnesota Vikings offense. He's just not the sweet back. From the 20 on first and 10, going deep and finding Carter out at the 43-yard line. A 23-yard pickup on first down. You talk about respect. They really give Anthony Carter the room. They were laying off four, five, six yards. Watch Carter now. Lined up against Lewis Billups. Billups will have help on the inside from Ricky Dixon. But again, Billups looking for the deep route. Five yards beyond Carter. He comes down with it before Dixon can get back into it. Still, though, Billups so late to react when Anthony makes his move back to the inside. Anthony has the body control to stop. Billups kept going. First and ten. Here's Wilson going deep again, intended for Jordan. And that time, the coverage on the play provided by number 27, Barney Bussey, staying with him step for step. Second down and ten. Jordan will be going to the Pro Bowl, as will six other Vikings. He'll be a backup, Will Jordan, to Keith Jackson of the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, he gets Pro Bowl respect, too. He gets the coverage from the back, not the linebacker. Cincinnati has yet to stop Minnesota from scoring on each of five drives. Four Carlos field goals and a touchdown. And it's 19 to 7. Second and 10 from the 43. And Wilson gets dumped back at the 32-yard line. Reggie Williams. And that's what Cincinnati has to do. They have got to pressure the front. They've got to blitz. They have to make something happen. This time it's Reggie Williams. Look at Reggie gets down in his stance. This is Xander standing up, but Reggie gets down, playing the role of a defensive lineman. And what happens is, up front, they let him go. They're counting on a back. Fenny comes up and chops him. But Reggie Williams, with a good hustle, gets back up and makes the play. Reggie had only a sack and a half all season coming into the game. Two and a half now, and <laughs> this is final year. And look what he has to do to get it. Line yeah. up a defensive tackle. <laughs> Maybe it'll keep him going for another 14. He'll rethink retirement. Third and 19, and the catch is made at the 49-yard line, somehow, some way, by Hassan Jones. And the Bengals are saying it should be no catch. Well, the ball is 25 yards down the field in the hands of Solomon Wilcots. If it stands, it is still short of the first down by four. Ball came loose after he hit the ground. Two-minute notification. Two-minute notification. Meanwhile, we come to the two-minute warning. Well, maybe we'll call it the two-minute notification. Let's, let's take a look at Hassan Jones. There is the ball. He goes down, and the ball does not come out until clearly he's made contact with the ground. Good call by the officials. When we come back, it is fourth and four. How do you get real premium? Well, in a moment, we're going to show you that last play before the two-minute warning with a different look, and we thought for a moment they'd hold up play, but the play stands. The Vikings to kick. Scribner's kick will bounce into the end zone. And the Bengals will begin their next drive from the 20. But what about that catch or no catch by well, Hassan Jones? Yeah, I said what a good call it was. We're going to show you here that he clearly loses the ball before he hits the ground. There's the ball. See the ball right there on its way out? I mean, now that's a look that we discovered during the commercial break. Kenny Wolf, Craig Janoff feed it up to us. Now, they saw that in the replay booth, and yet uh, they opted not to do anything with it. It had appeared clear to me that, that that ball was coming out before he hit the ground. The call would have been either a fumble or possibly incomplete and pass. It was an odd circumstance. The only reason they had the extra time was because of that two-minute warning. Were it not for that, it definitely would have stood. Correct. From the 20-yard line, here's Boomer Esiason throwing to the far side and incomplete intended for Tim McGee. Bengals have all of their timeouts left, 148 to go in the half. Reggie Rutland covering on the play. It'll be second down and 10 from the 20-yard line. 
season began with Esiason's health in question. Shoulder in particular. Has not been a problem for him. He's had a good year. Seems almost hard to believe that two touchdowns would give Cincinnati the lead. On second and ten, here's Brooks, and he gets taken out of bounds by Ray Berry. Oh, and a photographer really Ooh. hits it. And that is a young lady, if I... Uh, yeah, she's smiling, though. That was a real shot. And she's smiling. How's my hair? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a natural thought. Well, she's, she's, lucky, shot, she's lucky her hair is still on her head. Watch how hard <laughs> she gets hit by James Brooks. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, that's a that's a violent collision. She did not see that coming at all. I hope she's all right. Oh. We've had the courage of war tonight just to stay there. Third down, a long six. Here's a science in, and he has the first down as he fires over the middle to Tim McGee. Out to the 31, clock still ticking, 133. Eight-yard pickup. And as we said earlier, the hurry-up offense goes with Cincinnati. That is their offense for most of their offensive game. Yeah, but that's not very quick, and they're having to call a timeout. Boomer did not have the personnel to match the play and was forced to use a timeout, and in the interim, wasted about 15 seconds to boot. So uh, we talked about the hurry-up offense being an advantage for Cincinnati. It certainly was not there. They really squandered both a timeout and some valuable time off the clock. 122 remaining, two timeouts left. You know, one of the things the Bengals did uh, this week to try to prepare themselves for the crowd noise here at the Metrodome was to work out indoors at the University of Cincinnati. They turned up the loudspeakers and played crowd noise all week long. And as Sam said, it's been kind of an enjoyable week for the players because they haven't heard from us, the coaching staff, all week because we just let them go and practice because we had to simulate game conditions as well as we could. Coming up at halftime, Lynn Swan will uh, talk with University of Miami head coach Dennis Erickson, his Hurricanes take on Alabama in the Sugar Bowl next week. And we will uh, give you the up-to-the-minute situation in regard to the playoffs as we look ahead. First and 10 from the 32. Esaias into Brooks. He has room to roam and gets out to the 41-yard line to pick up a... Uh, Nine yards. I know JB's trying to make something happen, but he should have gone to the sidelines and got out of bounds. He made a decision uh, to pick up another first down, try to make more out of it, or step out of bounds and kill it. Meanwhile, the seconds tick off. Second and one. And this time, Brooks is helped out of bounds by Berry, stopping the clock with 60 seconds to play in the half. Bengals with two timeouts remaining. Sam White, hopeful of taking his team to another Super Bowl. They got there last year and came up a little short. First things first, though. They need to win tonight. That would put them in the playoffs against Houston next Sunday. They're down by 12. First and 10 at the 44. Siasen changing it at the line of scrimmage again. Brown gets open, and that's a first down at the 44-yard line. Tackled by a trio of Vikings, and White says, give me a timeout again. So the Bengals now have one remaining with 51 ticks of the clock left in the first half. And Eddie Brown does not spring to life. He's still down on the ground, getting up as if he really is favoring one of his legs. There's Eddie kind of hobbling back to the Cincinnati huddle. So now the Bengals with one timeout remaining. That wave by Eddie Brown was to Joey Browner, who was in on the tackle. You make a lot of friends when you travel to Pro Bowls. Well, Don Mikowski and the Packers are still at Brian Noble's house up in Green Bay watching this game. Don, uh, why don't you play quarterback a little bit here? You're on the 44-yard uh, line. Uh, what would you like here? What would you run? I don't know. They're, they're doing pretty uh, pretty well with the back come out of the backfield. Um, as long as you don't try to take too much at once, uh, just throw it short to the back and uh, at least get a field goal out of this drive, and they'll be fine. You got one timeout remaining. Does that to preclude uh, going down the middle? That'd, that'd be the easy place to go, but can you afford to do it here? 
Hey, you can't get, you can't get too greedy in these situations. That's what you're killing yourself for. He'll take the three. <laughs> First and ten. Cincinnati at the 43-yard line. That's Brooks in motion. Here comes the blitz, but it's picked up. And the throw is incomplete, intended for McGee. Tim McGee, the closest Bengal receiver, and he wasn't that close. Second down and ten. Well, what happened is two of the Bengal receivers ran into one another. Boy, what a squandered opportunity because they picked up the blitz beautifully. I mean, that was a big gamble that time by Minnesota coming up the middle, and the Bengal line and backs picked it up, and because of a confusion downfield, two of the receivers running into one another, Boomer couldn't capitalize on it. Definitely. When you see a blitz like that picked up and you figure with Cincinnati's receivers, somebody's going to spring free. That could have been a big play. Second and 10 from the 44. 46 seconds left. One timeout remaining for the Bengals. Studwell looks like he's... Here comes Berry, and Berry is the man who forced that incompletion. So the outside backer came flying through. Nobody picked him up, and Esaiason just had to dump it off. Third down. Now that's just a, a signal from Sam Weiss. We can only assume that the four means four wide receivers. That's it. Hillary comes in. Kendall Smith is there. Tim McGee and Eddie Brown. There's Ray Berry, number 50, totally untouched, unaccounted for. That just happens. He's called hot. He's the quarterback's read. The quarterback has to look right at him. When he sees him coming, he has to dump it off. Third and ten. Their touchdown came on a third and ten. Esiason fires, and it's knocked down. Intended for McGee and knocked away by Reggie Rutland. So the Bengals can't even get into field goal range. 39 seconds remaining now in the half. Frank, there's why I wouldn't want to play cornerback. Reggie Rutland is getting a nice hand, but he gambles. If he doesn't get this ball, this might be a touchdown. Here's an interesting... All right, we'll take a look at the replay first. See, look at the break. If he doesn't get that ball, if it somehow gets through his hands and gets to McGee, that's a touchdown. Well, he, here's a very interesting call now. It's fourth down and 10, and they're going to go for it at the 44-yard line. Uh, it's too long to kick a field goal. And Minnesota has three timeouts. Very risky call. From this position on the field. And Esaias and Chase throws. And it is picked off, but it hardly matters because an incompletion would have been about the same thing. Man, Scott he, Studwell. He picks up 10 yards yeah. by throwing the interception. Now there's a guy that makes a great sacrifice. Yep. I mean, he did. He saved his team 10 yards by throwing at the stud while going out of bounds. And now, that said, I doubt he did it on purpose. Yeah, he'll go down <laughs> with an INT, but he moved the Minnesota Vikings back about 12 yards on it. And it was uh, too much, I guess, to ask Studwell to have the presence of mind to drop it at that point. Yes, I think oh, so. Well, he's keeping track of stats also. <laughs> well, they're not thinking that out there at the moment. Hmm? Well, now we'll see what happens with Sam Weiss's move. Al points out three timeouts and the hands of the Minnesota Vikings because the Minnesota field goal at this point is a very big field goal it takes you from 12 up to 15 up watch for number 81 here's Wilson and the catch is made and that's Jim Gustafson getting out of bounds at the 47 yard line so the Vikings trying to turn a 12 point cushion into more than a two touchdown cushion going into the half 26 seconds left If Minnesota should score, if they should pad this 19-7 lead, a risky, risky call by Sam Weiss will have blown up right in his mm -hmm. face. That was not fourth and one or fourth and two. Fourth and ten at the fourth 44. That's a tough pickup. Out of the shotgun. Here's Wilson. Under pressure. Blitz is on. Going deep. And out of bounds. A nice adjustment made that time by Jones. Billups wants offensive interference, but there's no flag. The ball caught clear out of pass, but nice adjustment. What an understatement. All right. Nice adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to make too much of a fuss about something that's out of bounds, but pretty good athleticism there by Hassan Jones. And I like that inflection in your voice, Al. It's going to rise to the occasion. Let's hear more of that. <laughs> 20 seconds remaining. 
Second and ten at the 47. Three receivers to the right. Wilson out of the gun. Keeps Penny in the block. Pressure on. And Wilson gets sacked at the 43-yard line. Natu Tuatagaloa, the rookie out of California, was right there. Number 96, along with McClendon. And the clock is now stopped by the Vikings with 13 seconds remaining. Carlos uh, needs the Vikings to pick up um, about 25 yards for him to begin to think about another field goal attempt. Career long 51 for Rich. Now what is the deal? He is Kirk Loudermilk's brother-in-law. That's correct. Kirk Loudermilk, the starting center for the Minnesota Vikings, and they had a little deal earlier this year. I guess uh, uh, something was said criticizing the Vikings' offensive linemen and the way they dress, and so they strung up old Rich Carlos from the crossbar on the goalpost and left him hang there for a while. I guess it was actually uh, Rich's wife that said something about the uh, offensive line who proved that they've got thin skin and when it comes to their wardrobe. This one you've got to go way upfield on. Here's your timeout. Try to get Carlos within field goal range. Third and 15, and three receivers are all down there, including Jones, who's made a season out of catches like that. Hassan Jones, who had a huge Hail Mary reception against the Rams, pulls one down here. Timeout with four seconds. He made a miraculous catch a few moments ago out of bounds. You saw that. This one, he just went up topside, came down with it. Well, this is textbook. Now watch number 84. Timing, Frank. Look at the timing of his leap. Right in the middle. Phillips is there, number 24. Up he goes, and down he comes. Four seconds remaining on the clock. Boy, he just timed it perfectly when he left the ground. And right now, Sam Weish is, again, looking back at his fourth and ten decision, saying, oh, no, how could this be happening? Yep. And again, you're going from a 12-point lead to a 15-point lead. And it's real simple. When you think of the mathematics, it means the Bengals need more than two touchdowns. And here comes Carlos for number five. Chip shot for him. He kicks seven in the Rams game. This one from 25 yards. And it is good. And what a big field goal because now two touchdowns by Cincinnati. Still has some trailing. Two touchdowns before would have given them the lead. Two touchdowns now have them trailing 22-21. First half is gone under the dome. I refreshes completely by Nissan built for the human race and by the travelers. You're better off under the umbrella. <clears throat> And back we come on Christmas night. Hope you're enjoying the holiday here in Minnesota. Some 60,000 have enjoyed the first half immensely as their Vikings try to stay alive, try to advance to the playoffs. They lead by 15. Rich Carlos, who had five field goals in the first half, spins this one down inside the 10 and out of bounds, and thus the Bengals can take over at the 35-yard line. We had an interesting afternoon here in Minneapolis. Dan and Al and myself, we visited a bunch of homeless kids, a couple of hundred of them, at the 410 Incorporated Learning Center, a favor project of the Vikings players and their wives, and of course Mike Lynn, the executive president here of Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings. Vikings. We did a little Christmas carol, the Chipmunks Christmas carol. I think it was appreciated. I think it, we were all moved by it. Great project by the Vikings and their manager. Mm -hmm. First and 10, Cincinnati from the 35, and Esiason begins the second half with an errant pass intended for Tim McGee. It'll be second and 10. If you're wondering why they didn't kick again, uh, remember the, a couple of years ago, the league changed the rule to speed up a game. If the, the kick goes out of bounds, you can take the option of having the ball at your own 35-yard line. That's what the Bengals opted to do and set up shop there. Especially the way they've been running back kicks tonight. Yeah. Second down and 10 at the 35-yard line. Asayakin looks first toward McGee and then over the middle for Holman, and he gets wrapped up, and the play is broken up by Scott Studwell. Third down and 10. And you talk about 
locking on to someone. Stud, Studwell that time all over Rodney Holman. I mean, he just doesn't get any more than maybe a yard or two separation. Right there in the middle of your screen at the top. Holman doesn't complain about it. No, nope. I mean, that's just, just good defense. And look at the movement by Studwell going right for the right arm and bringing it down so Holman can't pull the ball in. Third and ten. Esiason stepping up. Throws on the run and wide open down the far sideline is Rodney Holman. And Rodney Holman, who just dropped the last pass, goes all the way for a touchdown. And Joey Browner has egg all over his face. Looked like he came off the bench. Joey Browner is locked up on Rodney oh. Holman. And when Boomer Esiason starts to scramble, Browner moves off of Holman, comes towards Esiason, and Rodney Holman is long gone. Browner, I don't think, could have even have dreamed about getting back into that play. Could be that he thought Esiason was going to be sacked. Esiason scrambling around. He's not one of the great scramblers, but he moves around in the pocket as good as anyone. And there you saw 47. He was with him all the way until Esiason started the scramble. Jim Breach's extra point is good, and the crowd has been silenced because in the first 25 seconds of the third quarter, Cincinnati has shaved the Minnesota lead to eight. Rodney Holman, he'll be going to the Pro Bowl again. He'll be the AFC starter, his first catch of the night. That's all made possible by the scramble of Esiason, Browner's overreaction to that scramble, and Rodney Holman staying alive, breaking off his route going down the sidelines and presenting a target to his quarterback. And guess who this makes very happy. Yep, you guessed it right. The Green Bay Packers celebrate a Cincinnati touchdown. serenity. It takes confidence. Control. The Travelers has been delivering on this promise of financial peace of mind for 125 years. With carefully controlled investments, with insurance protection you can trust. The Travelers, you're better off under the umbrella. It's Bo Schembechler's final game. Michigan sets their sights on the national title when they meet Pac-10 champ USC in the Rose Bowl. New Year's Day on ABC Sports. Joey Browner angry with himself with the coverage that resulted in Holman's touchdown. It's 22 to 14. And Johnson's kick is down in the end zone by Walker. And let's go back and have another peek at the TD. Yeah, let's look at exactly what happened back in the secondary. Keep in mind the 35 is up. Here's Rodney Holman right here. Here's Joey Browner. But the key figure is Boomer. When Boomer moves up, watch Browner come off. He'll come back to the inside. Holman stays alive and goes down the sideline. Here's Boomer making his move, and there's Joey Browner. He commits to leave Holman, gets caught in no man's land. Holman stays alive, and there's the Bengal touchdown. An all-pro safety, Joey Browner making a move there. Not befitting his position on the Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl team. Getting beaten by a Pro Bowl performer, Rick Fenney, on Minnesota's first play of the third quarter. Takes it up to the 25-yard line, and here are the numbers through the first half with Minnesota clearly dominating total yards and time of possession. You just said it all, and of course the turnovers are Cincinnati's, and they 
converted, were converted quickly into Viking points. And also it's interesting to note Cincinnati with only 39 yards rushing in the first half, and they are number one in the NFL in rushing offense coming in. But of course they're going against the Vikings on second and five, who just happen to be the NFL's number one defensive unit. Then he picks up a couple, and it'll be third down and three. Rodney Holman on the sidelines. Catching his breath after a long crash into the end zone. But again, as you look back, and if you were with us early, you know that it was Minnesota mauling Cincinnati throughout the much of the first half. But Minnesota moving down the field, forced to settle for five field goals. And uh, that was a major reflection of the scoreboard at the moment. Third and three from the 27. Alfred Anderson is in the game as the sole setback here with four receivers and they give it to him and he gets knocked down short of the 30-yard line so with four receivers they give it to anderson his first carry of the night and it's david grant number 98 who stops him and you hear the crowd they're rumbling they're booing a little bit bob schnelker's play calling here in minneapolis has become a very sensitive issue to the fans there it is take a look at it up front good penetration and then the slide over by Grant to make the tackle. And the crowd wanting something a little flashier, I think, in an attempt to pick up a first down. That's not always the right thing to do. Here's Bucky Scribner, a wobbly end over end kick, and a fair catch is called for at the 34 yard line. Carey playing it very safe that time because he had room to run. Nobody was within 15 yards of him. 37 yard boot. Not the place you'd normally see a fair catch. You're right, 15 yards is about the cushion he had. Sometimes I imagine my wimpy sedan is a Nissan Danza, the new one with the big engine. And I take it shopping in Monte Carlo. My kids are yelling, I think I will. Karen. Is your daddy home? Two calls at 7 p.m. from L.A. to San Francisco. No, I don't want to speak to your doll, sweetie. I want to speak to your daddy. With MCI Primetime, this 15-minute call costs 31% less than AT&T's regular evening rate. Put, Put daddy, daddy on, on the, the phone. phone. And Primetime lets you save no matter how long you talk. So the choice that's right... Just put the phone down, sweetie. But, but don't, don't hang, hang up. ...is the choice on the right. MCI Primetime. Real savings 24 hours a day. Call now, get one month free. Under the Teflon coated fiberglass here in Minneapolis. There's, there you go back to your structural engineer. <laughs> I'm just repeating what just some structural engineer once told me. Uh, Al, you can do it all. <laughs> Under the dome in Minneapolis, and the Bengals are trying to, to do it all as they were down by 15 and now down by 8 and Brooks breaks one and takes it out to the 49-yard line. A 15-yard pickup, and the momentum has completely shifted in this one as Joey Browner makes the tackle. And Joey and Browner's hurt. Up. Yep, he's hurt. Boy, what a brilliant open-field tackle by Browner on Brooks. If James is a, able to dance to the inside and get away from Joey Browner, he might not be caught. Joey Browner's playing with very sore ribs. Tim did tonight. I don't know what, whether or not that's it or not, but he's kind of acting that way. He's walking fine. Legs appear to be all right, but came into tonight with some very sore ribs, but indeed a good open field tackle against one of the more shifty running backs in the league as Brooks breaks it back. He loves to go against the grain. No way he's going to take that out to the outside. Takes it back inside and runs <laughs> right into Browner, and Browner has to leave the game. At the 50, first and 10, Esiason going deep and incomplete. 
intended for McGee, and he was working with Reggie Rutland. Well, that's fine coverage by Reggie Rutland, and he gets up kind of holding his leg a little bit. Reggie's not exactly sprinting back to the Minnesota huddle. Nice fade pattern down the sideline, and this is this is just beautiful coverage by Rutland. He's screening McGee from the football. Tim McGee is going up for hopefully just a ricochet shot or somehow a miracle where the ball would come through. Browner comes back into the game at strong safety. On second and ten, here's Brooks. Ridden down at the 47 after a pickup of three. Scott Studwell, completing his 13th season in the league, makes the tackle. I asked Scott before the ballgame tonight whether or not he was going to come back and play next year, and he kind of gave me that shrug, and, and if you know Scott Stud Studwell, you know that that shrug is, yeah, I'd like to come back and play as long as I can be productive, as long as I don't embarrass myself. This guy's a ways away from doing that. Third and seven from the 47. That's Holman in motion. Fake to ball. Esiason, after a stumble, throws under pressure and has it tipped incomplete. Batted by Joey Browner. Oh, and they're going to rule it a sack. Oh, they're going to give Chris Dolman the sack. Pat Haggerty comes over and credits Dolman with grasp and control. And that would be his second sack of the game. Back at the 46-yard line. There are some defensive ends that Boomer Esiason is going to outrun. In fact, there are a lot of defensive ends. Chris Dolman is not one of them. In fact, I don't know there's a quarterback in the league that could outrun Chris Dolman. He was an outside linebacker when he came into this league and spent a couple of <laughs> seasons as an outside linebacker. He's got some... I've been too tough, Steve. I've been too tough lately. I'm not going to say it. Yeah, I'll say it. I mean, what, that's a sack? What are we talking about? Johnson's kick is fielded by Lewis at the five-yard line. And he gets taken down at the 15-yard line by Leo Barker. I'm sure that's what Tim Harris is saying oh. as he's trying to protect his league-leading 19-and-a-half sack. He's going, what in the world was that? But they give Dolman a sack, and that's 19 for Dolman. Uh, the, the phrase is grasp and control. I saw the grasp. I'm not so sure about the control. I'm not even sure I saw the grasp. Well, he was barely. He, he was hanging on to his legs. Hmm. I don't think anyone was more surprised than Dolman. He had, he didn't complain about it. Yeah. There goes Esiason. He throws the football. Hardly controlled. Oh. Now Dolman's not even looking for the sack. He just gets up, starts to go back to his position, and they let him know, and he does a little celebration dance. Okay, I can't help myself. That's a horrible call. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, I tried. I really coming. I tried. First down from the 15, lofting it deep and incomplete intended for Carter. By the way, on Dolman's prior sack, the official scorer has ruled that a half a sack, so he has one and a half tonight. I think Henry Thomas was the other guy who was there with him on that right. first one. And it gives him 18 and a half now, and he's one behind Harris of Green Bay. Yeah, when you get a guy who's already just lying on the ground, it's only worth half a sack yeah. anyway. Second and ten at the 15-yard line. David Fulcher, meanwhile, is still out. Barney Bussey is the strong safety for Cincinnati. Fulcher shaking up in the first half. Second and ten. Wilson pressured. Sacked back at the seven-yard line. Skip McClendon dropping him there. And Reggie Williams was able to flush him out with McClendon finishing him off. Now that we see old Mo, momentum kind of switching to the other side, I think we got to remind everyone of Sam Weish's uh, decision on fourth and ten inside the last minute of the first half to go for it. He did not get it. Minnesota comes back with a long pass to Hassan Jones, and Carlos adds field goal number five that made it a 22 to seven ball game. If that wouldn't have happened, if it would have been a 19-14 game, a Bengal touchdown would give them the lead. Third down and 18 from the seven. Nobody is there. Jim Gustafson, the intended receiver, and Jason Buck was there to knock Wilson down as he got in the way. And so the Vikings will be forced to kick, and the Bengals should wind up with pretty good field position. Almost like the two teams have changed uniforms from the first quarter to the third quarter. Momentum strictly now with Cincinnati, and they should get the ball back in a real fine field position. I think Wade Wilson, after that last pass, was mad at himself. 
because that was clearly an overthrow that would have been a fairly easy completion. Scribner out of the end zone with carry at midfield. Carry calls for a fair catch. He's not taking any chances at the 45 of the Vikings after a 38-yard boot. So Cincinnati has it in Minnesota territory. They trail by eight, and we have 10-31 to go to the third. Winner to the playoffs, the loser home. with Frank Gifford and Dan Deardorff. The regular season coming to a conclusion on Christmas night in Minneapolis where the Vikings lead by eight and the Bengals have it first and 10 at the Minnesota 45-yard line. And Eric Ball, the UCLA rookie, picks up 13, takes it to the 32. Brad Edwards and Joey Browner converge on the tackle. First and 10. Ball, who was injured Often at UCLA, the question about Ball coming in, he was their number, well, he was their first draft choice, so he came in the second round, was would he be durable enough? Because when he's healthy, he's terrific. And the two key blocks that time, Anthony Munoz, and how about James Brooks? From the 32, Brooks. Somehow burrows his way through that pile and picks up close to six. This is what Cincinnati came into the game thinking they could do tonight. They were first in the league in rushing the football. Minnesota shut them down in every phase of the game, but particularly in the running game early on. And now Cincinnati is starting to move the ball on the ground. There he is. Tonight, Brooks, 6.2 yards per carry. Breaker gives an awful ball, and now Brooks comes back with five yards. Second and five from the 25. Here is Brooks following ball, and he's wrestled down after a pickup of a couple by Mark Dusbovic at the 25-yard line, and upcoming will be a third and three. Well, we've seen Cincinnati just run, run, run the ball. A great play-action team here on third and three, a situation Sam Weiss would not hesitate at all to go to the play-action. Cincinnati has scored both of its touchdowns tonight on third down plays in each instance, third and ten. Third and three to the interior lineman. They get the count, they get the play, and they pass it out to the tackle. Play clock is down to five. And Brooks spins his way to a first down and a lot more as he takes it to the 11-yard line. Reggie Rutlin makes the tackle. And every time I watch James Brooks, I can't believe he's in his ninth year in the league. Playing like a young Colt. That time, Minnesota was coming with the blitz, and they were just straight away blocking out Cincinnati quick with the hurry-up offense. Without a huddle. On first and 10 from the 11, and Esiason in the grasp and sacked at the 25 by Goldman. Perhaps it needed a huddle. <laughs> Perhaps. So Dolman now ties Harris for the league lead with 19 and a half at the 24-yard line. It is second down and 23. Keith Millard has limped off the defensive tackle and is on the sideline. Replaced by Thomas Struthers. And this is the loudest the crowd has been yet. Play clock to three, two, one, and they just get the playoff. And the ball is taken out of Esaias' hands by Henry Thomas. It bounces to the ground and right back up into the arms of Thomas. I mean, Henry Thomas just swats it out with his right hand and it bounces right back to him like a yo-yo. Watch Henry Thomas. He'll come in from the left side of your screen. See him move to the left of Boomer. He just slaps it down and one hop right back up. It's tough to make a football bounce like that, and Max Montoya ends up with the tackle. At the 44-yard line, first down as Finney picks up about four. 
stopped by Reggie Williams. So the Bengals had a first and 10 at the 11. And the next thing you know, it's Minnesota ball near midfield, halfway through the third quarter. Uh, the word that comes to mind when you describe this Minnesota defensive scheme is, is disruptive. I mean, it's penetration. It is chaos that they try to create in the other team's side of the ball. And they have certainly succeeded tonight in doing so to the Bengals. Second and six. Vikings with five sacks tonight. Off the play fake. Here's a Cincinnati sack. Is Reggie Williams, who had one and a half sacks all season long, has two in what might be the final game of his career. Oh, and that's the crowd. You hear them booing. They're not applauding Reggie, believe me. They're booing Wade Wilson for standing there long enough and taking that sack without throwing it away. Wilson was trying to get the ball to Anthony Carter, and once again, Carter, top of your screen, was covered well by Eric Thomas. He wanted to deliver the ball right there to Carter, but Thomas was all over Carter. Just give Carter or Eric Thomas a part of that sack. Great coverage on Carter. Williams comes out on third and 14. Four receivers out of the shotgun. Wilson fires too low. Intended for Gustafson. Now they can do it. Well, they can boo that. What kind of a call is that when you need 14 and you throw it about six yards upfield? Well, you, you had a blitz adjustment, Al. They had no choice. Cincinnati comes with the blitz. Lewis Billups will come off the near side. And I, I, it's the call is, is that Minnesota didn't give themselves an option. The blitz forces a shorter route by the receiver. He reads blitz. Well, that was not a, a stellar offensive series by uh, by the Vikings after the big play by Thomas. Mm -mm. Scribner to kick. And this is a beauty because it's not only deep, but it's angled, and it goes out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Scribner yelling that he wanted a roughing the kicker penalty. John Holifield came in there and, and dropped Scribner. There was no doubt about that, but Pat Haggerty, the official there, rules that he was blocked in. Watch this. I think we'll see this right up the middle. Holyfield continues on through and knocks Scribner down. Well, we've seen that called manslaughter the Man. last few weeks. I'm not saying anything. Oh, go ahead. It's not good, was it? IBM presents You Make the Call. Lionel James of the Chargers feels a punt, takes a few steps forward, and then passes backward toward a teammate. The teammate and the Cleveland player simultaneously knock the ball out of bounds. Now you make the call. Where do you spot the ball? You got to juggle ten things all at once. And get them done right. Get them done before lunch. How are you going to do it? Well, you're going to PS to it. With the IBM PS2, you can do things with micro channel that other computers just can't handle. You got an edge in power and speed. You're a forward thinker. Yes, indeed. How are you gonna do it? Easy. You're gonna PS to it. The solution is IBM. What call did you make? A backward pass is considered a free ball. No matter who touched it last, it belongs to the team last in possession at the spot where it went out of bounds. If I had a Nissan 240SX, it'd be a red coupe. What? No flag on he that last play. Take another look here. You know, he thinks he's going to draw a flag. Well, he should have drawn a flag. Number, I mean, watch Holyfield. 40. This takes out the kicker. Now watch Holyfield. Oh, I did it. I ran into the kicker. But no flag. Cincinnati has it at the 12-yard line. First and 10. 6.26 to play in the third. Crowd trying to disrupt the Siasson. Here's Ball. This crowd isn't helping anybody involved with Cincinnati. This, this is where the crowd becomes almost as disruptive as the Minnesota defense. This is where life on the road in the National Football League is tough. Of course, over Cincinnati, when you say, Dan, that they do so much at the line of scrimmage. They change sometimes 75, 80% of the time, and they have to change the count. They have to get the word out to the wide receivers, and they do more verbal communication with the line of scrimmage than most teams in the league. Boy, there's Brad Edwards flying in there and throwing a forearm. Second and eight, and Brooks gets popped as he makes the catch, and Lee comes up from the corner to extend his holiday wishes. 
Well, there's a good look while Carl Lee's going to the Pro Bowl. And a bad play to have called when they're in his own formation. Lee had rolled up over in the left side, and he was right in the face of it. No huddle. Third and 11. See, this, uh, this was nothing more than to keep Minnesota from being able to substitute. Here's a little variation of yep. what they call the sugar huddle. They want my 11 against your 11. Now, if Minnesota tried to substitute, they'd turn around and snap the ball. Meanwhile, the play clock is down to six, and this place is shaking. On third and 11. Messiah and fires to the far side, and the catch is made by McGee. Inbounds and a first down. Carl Lee providing the coverage. He was right there, but McGee having a terrific year makes a clutch catch. McGee with the good speed gives it the look of upfield. Breaks it out, and Esiason has already delivered the ball on that break. Oh, oh year <laughs> McGee is having. Oh, ye of weak arm do not attempt this pass. Look at that throw by Boomer. Oh, oh ye of, of, of small arm and, and unmanly biceps. Do not throw that one. That's a big gun. <laughs> You're really into this Christmas thing, are you? Absolutely. Say, say what? <laughs> <laughs> From the 24-yard line. Straight ahead, out to the 27 goes James Brooks for a gain of about four. <laughs> yeah, no. hey, maybe you could, uh, maybe you could throw a few yees oh. on these guys. Val, uh, aren't you? You're doing GMA next week, aren't you? Good uh, Morning America yeah. this week. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Why don't you interview uh, Frank and me? I'm, kind of <laughs> I'm a, thinking about it. Maybe a nice touch. <laughs> well, we're not busy the rest of the week. Uh, right? don't, don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> That's just a little early for us. <laughs> Uh, what are you there, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. With Joan? I'll think about you guys. Second down and six from the 28-yard line as Esiason. Great play fake, freezes the defense, and then lost one to Eddie Brown, and a first down out at the 45-yard line as he beats Carlin. Oh, that's good. He could have only stayed in bounds. That's six points for Eddie Brown, the speedster. Wide open to flip. We talked about the play action of the Bengals, and watch Esiason hide this ball. Ball with a good fake, doesn't give up that fake, bangs right into a linebacker, and Brown is wide open. Ooh. Watch Esiason, he puts it in there, the hand, covers it up. Meanwhile, Ball is carrying out that fake right into the arms of a linebacker. At the 45-yard line, here's Ball going nowhere. Busting the play up is Marcus Bobic. The ball comes loose. Oh, and they say Minnesota oh. has it. They say it's a fumble. Oh, and Cincinnati just stood around and looked at the ball thinking it was down. Dolman recovers after Deuce Bobic dislodges it. There it is again. That ball is... That's a fumble. Loose. That's a fumble all, all the way. way. Absolutely. Dusbabic cleans it out with his foot. I think Chris Dolan just fell on that because of instinct. That's the way they're coached. Anytime you see a ball on the field, you get on it. Don't wait to listen for a whistle. Not bad for Dolman. Time for the league lead in sacks. Time for the league lead in fumble recoveries. Bowling straight ahead is Herschel Walker for about five to the 33-yard line. And where are they happy? They're happy in the Steel City, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Well, what a turnaround. All right, all right. That Pittsburgh Steeler team, those first two games blowing out. All of a sudden, they wind up with a 9-7 and seven season, and they are looking at a very likely playoff spot. You have friends in Pittsburgh, Chris. That was a fumble. Tonight. Yeah, well, Herschel Walker doing what he can do so well. He just carried the pile about five yards. It's only an eight-point game with Cincinnati. Four turnovers to the Vikings, none. Second and five. Here's Walker. Back to Finney. Runs into Finney, and that enables Ricky Dixon to come up and take him down. But not until Herschel Walker gets to about the 27-yard line, and that is enough for a first down. 3.17 to play in the third quarter. The Metrodome, the Vikings would not host a playoff game unless they got to the NFC Championship game, and it would only be against a wild card team, be it the Rams or Philadelphia, if they advance. Otherwise, they're on the road. 
Walker from the 27 gets taken down uh, just about at the line of scrimmage by Ed Brady, number 58. Herschel Walker, in virtually every system he's played, has played in a system that has been designed around him. The, for the first time here in Minnesota, he's having to fit into a system, a system that's not designed just for 34 and 34 alone. And he's not really doing it all that well. And look at Herschel right here actually losing the ball before he goes down. That's a fumble all the way. That is a fumble all the way by Herschel Walker. And Minnesota gets lucky. Second and 10 from the 27-yard line. Pressure is on, and Wilson is able to get it away and escape the sack. And the Bengals want grasp and control, but Cumbrian just didn't get there in time. They were setting up a middle screen to Herschel Walker. He got there so quickly that Wilson did not have a chance to let it develop. You'll we'll see it. Now, a little screen yet. Dan touched on it earlier. You've got to at least touch those defensive linemen. You've got to check their charge initially, or your quarterback will never get it off. Well, what they really wanted was grounding, but they don't get that either. Shows you how far Kumai is back, though, from that horrendous break he had in the Super Bowl last year. Third and 10 from the 27. To a man rush. Wilson fires, and what a catch made by Hassan Jones, taken down by Thomas. Well, Eric Thomas is going to argue that he ended up out of bounds. He ended up out of bounds because but Thomas put him there, and that's going to be a catch. Jones is really shaken up. Kind of right on his back. Boy, Wade Wilson put something on that one. Looking at him all the way, that'll bring Eric Thomas back. And Eric Thomas has played a fine football game. He gets back into it, and he just rides Hassan Jones up into the air and out of bounds. I don't know what more you could ask of either the receiver or the, the defender on the play. The ultimate sacrifice. That's some aerial work by Hassan Jones getting up. Now we want him to get up. It's a good call by the official, though. He rules that he would have come down in bounds. Crowd ooing and eyeing over the repeated replays. You see Jones thinking about getting up, and of course, anytime you see a player come down like that on the back of his head and neck, where we're seeing the hands, the arms, everything move. And Eric Thomas saying good deal. He's all right. Or at least he thinks he's all right. Yep. It's a what? tough game. Eric Thomas doing his job. Nothing intended whatsoever. This plays a good, tough corner. Maybe a bit in the shadow of David Fulcher and Lewis Phillips, but has had a great season. And we've watched him perform grand style here tonight. He, I think, is quite obviously concerned about the condition of Hassan Jones. When play resumes, the ball is at the 15-yard line of Cincinnati, and Carter begins to clap because Jones rises to his feet. And in a class move, there's Eric Thomas saying, hey, I'm glad you're all right. Class move by Eric Thomas. Now I think we can go back and savor a great effort by Wilson and Hassan Jones. I think Jones was looking up at the board. He wants to see the replay of that. He doesn't realize it's already been played five or six times. They should give him a private screening, though. I think they better wait a while. I don't think it would be recorded for the moment. Looks a little shaky. There it is again, <laughs> up on the board here. Boy, and his head Ooh. hits. Boy, you can see where his head is, the first thing that hits the turf. No wonder he's a little loser. First and 10, Minnesota at the 15-yard line. Here is Finney on a counter. Picks up about a yard, gets wrestled down. Loose ball, Cincinnati ball. And the Vikings, their first turnover of the day. Skip McClendon was the first guy in there that disrupted the play. And Jason Buck recovers it. Oh, boy, they were in well within another field goal range. Take a look at it again. Carl Zander, 91, in on the play. And Buck.
Buck down there at the bottom had his feet around the ankles and the ball comes right to him. Everybody wants to see themselves on the big board. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jason says, yeah, that's all right. That'll work. <laughs> that works for me. Does not work for him. First recovery of his career. He wants to savor that one, and it couldn't come at a better time for Cincinnati with Minnesota deep in Bengal territory. Flag goes down after ball gets dropped by Millard, who had been shaken up and spent the last series on the bench. Well, they're going to get holding against the Bengals. Bruce Reimers, number 75, was the man pleading his case. I think probably his responsibility to block Millard to begin with. That could be the double whammy. A play for a loss plus a hold. Holding, number 75, offense, first down. Millard has been playing the past few weeks with a separated shoulder. Uh, it's very painful, but you go to the sidelines and you rest for a few moments, and you usually can come back, and we've seen Millard do just that. There's the matchup right here. Watch Millard take the big move to the outside. Big rush to the outside. He makes the play, but the hold is called. Not much of a hold. It results in a seven-yard penalty and after this, and so it's first and 17, and the catch is made by Brown, and his forward progress should net him the first down. There's the marker, and he has it out at the 25-yard line. You know, that was a change by Esaias with the line of scrimmage, and he gave a hand signal to Eddie Brown as to the pass route that he wanted him to run. And we've got someone hurt all the way back down at the goal line. That's Anthony Munoz, I believe, number mm -hmm. 78. Oh, and what a, what a staggering blow this would be to the Bengals if there's something seriously wrong for this guy, the man who, in my opinion, the offensive lineman of the decade for the 80s, and I mean one of the great offensive tackles of all time. I mean, we're talking in the top two or three. And they're looking at the right shoulder. This guy is so good. He is so big. <laughs> He's 6'6", 285, and looks bigger. You know, he does a lot of speaking to uh, young kids around the Cincinnati area. As a matter of fact, he's their Traveler's Man of the Year. And, of course, that is for getting out into the community and working, and this man certainly has done that. Here's Anthony Munoz. This is Chris Dolman. Here's Munoz. Let's see if we can see what happens. Anthony works out of the two-point stance. Dolman takes the upfield. He rides him out of the play. And look how smart he is. Look at how he got the arms up in the air to say to the official, hey, I'm not holding this guy. I'm just riding him down to the ground. Well, he has all the nuances, doesn't he? Well, you were to say, though, he does go out. He goes out and talks to kids in school. He's very anti-drug oriented, and the kids listen to him. You better listen to him. I mean, do you realize what presence of mind that was to get his hands? He realized that his guy's going down to the ground, and he doesn't want there to be any appearance from any angle of the field that he's riding him into the ground with his arms, throwing him in there to get the holding call. That consecutive Pro Bowls now for him. That's just nine in a row. Nine in a row. Brian Blados, who had been playing Joe Walter's spot on the other side of the line at right tackle, now moves into Munoz's spot with Walter in the game. First down, Cincinnati at the 25-yard line. On a sweep, Brooks. And nothing develops as he tried to follow Bruce Reimers. Ken Clark and Joey Browner converge on the tackle, and we're down to a minute to play in the third quarter. With Munoz on the sidelines, wouldn't you say, Dan, the offensive scheme of things, well, that becomes academic because here comes Munoz back into the game. Go on, but you're right, they're a very left-oriented team. When it's crunch time, they, they go left, and why not? Uh, the Raiders went left behind Art Shell and Gene Upshaw. And we have another Bengal now, now at the 26-yard line. It's Bruce Reimers, the so, left guard. So the whole left side of the line on back-to-back -back plays, the left tackle, left guard. It's like cramping more than that's what they would, how they would treat the cramp in the leg. And when you see them stretch them out like that there. You know, there's a, a lot of times there's a problem late in the season with cramps. Because it's cold outside back home, you don't get the good work outside. There's Bruce Reimers, number 75, right on the 25-yard line, pulling. 
Comes out, makes his block on Scott Studwell. Now check that. That's Deuce Bobic, 59. But you don't get that good work back home. You don't get the good sweat. You don't get the heavy work that you get during the earlier part of the season. And you'll see that a lot. You'll get cramps late in the year, especially here in a dome where it's warmer than what you're used to. You can see them working on the left calf. And it all surprised, too, that he might be on antibiotics, be antibiotics because he was suffering from the flu coming into the game. Well, you can see Bruce right there. He just grabs at it. The right leg first, then the left leg. Yeah, we're having dual malfunctions here, I think. <laughs> and Whose you know legs what? Are these? You can't move at all then. Look, he's afraid to take a step. Yeah, time to time to sit down. Oh. Never yeah, have that, you know, you don't want to put your toe up or your toe down. It doesn't work either way. 52 seconds remaining. We're in the third quarter at the Metrodome. 22 to 14, Minnesota. This enables us on lesson to Conversed with Sam White prior to a second down and eight situation. Dwayne Woodruff is uh, serving as the host tonight for the, uh, the neighborhood showing up, Dwayne. Yep. So uh, what do you doing? guys what do you guys think at this point, Dwayne? Well, uh, it looks pretty good, and we're uh, just hoping Minnesota can uh, come in there and score a few more points for us. Hey, we've, I, I have to ask. I mean, here's your team. Let's talk about you guys for a second. You get obliterated the first two weeks of the season. You look like you're going to go 0-16. You've got a chance to wind up in the playoffs. How? Well, uh, you know, we just had 45 guys had a lot of character and belief in themselves. And, uh, you know, we just hung in there pretty well. We didn't have anybody else to turn to but ourselves, and, and they paid off uh, well for us. People I think were, it would be an understatement, uh, Dwayne. It was a great turnaround, uh, and I think a team that uh, is on the upswing once again. Well, I think so. You know, we uh, you know had a little rough going there early in the season, uh, but as uh, the season went on, we have a lot of young guys that came in and did a good job, and, and our defense jailed for us, and the offense started scoring quite a few points, and uh, consequently, we started uh, winning a lot of ball games, and uh, we're sitting here on Monday night hoping that uh, the Minnesota wins one for us. Minnesota started to build up the points, and your whole neighborhood showed up, huh, Wayne? <laughs> That's how it goes when you're on top, they babe. <laughs> okay. It's freezing outside. <laughs> we'll check back with you shortly as we resume action here. Rymers, under his own power, goes to the sideline, and Cincinnati now resumes on second down and eight from the 27-yard line. Esiason fires. It's tipped, and it is picked off by Deuce Bobic. Deuce Bobbick, native Minnesotan, starting tonight only because of the injury to Mike Merriweather, the first of his career. And like Merriweather, a good athlete. He was recruited to the University of Minnesota as a basketball player. That was his first sport. He is very quick. He moves around very well. And when we talked to Jerry Burns about the fact that Merriweather couldn't go tonight, he didn't seem all that concerned because of this man, Mark Deuce Bobbick. One of the big pluses for Deuce Bobbick, as we look at the play really being made up front, though, by Carl Lee. Carl Lee's play on the ball allows Deuce Bobbick to come in late. So Minnesota from the 42 as Fenny takes it to the 39. Esiason has thrown three interceptions tonight, and Cincinnati has turned the ball over five times. Three times in this quarter against the league's top defense. And it's amazing they're that close, turning it over five times against Minnesota. Carl Lee accepting some congratulations there. He made that all possible. Well, the third quarter is now over. 15 minutes to go. The Vikings go into the fourth quarter, seeking a playoff berth, leading the Cincinnati Bengals by eight. And, AB and make it third down and eight as we begin the fourth quarter with the Minnesota Vikings leading the Cincinnati Bengals 22 to 14. Oh, 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 Richie. Oh, oh. <laughs> Our man Richie Westline. This is the same guy who uh, is a regular in the dog pound in, Cin in Cleveland. I'm not say Cincinnati or Sam Weiss will yell at me too. Richie, a man for all seasons. <laughs> Third down and eight from the 40. Juggled snap. But Wilson makes the most of it. Dixon takes him down at the 35. They're short of the first down by three. 
at the 35. So you're looking at about a 52-yard field goal attempt here. And they gather around Schmelker and Burns on the near side, and they send in Carlos. That was going to be an underneath handoff to Finney. Rick Finney was supposed to take that ball and run it underneath, and good presence of mind by Wade Wilson to make the best, as Al said, out of a bad situation. So you're looking at a 52-yard attempt, if indeed it is an attempt. The longest attempt, the longest field goal of Carlos's career, 51. Yeah, keep in mind, if they can draw Cincinnati offsides, it'll be a first down. Scribner to hold. And this kick is... It hit the upright. upright. It hit the upright. It had the distance, but hit the upright and bounces back. And now Cincinnati will take over at the line of scrimmage, which is out at the 35-yard line. So they have good field position following the missed field goal. Well, Burns trying to play a hot hand, or, or hot foot, I suppose, because Carlos had been booming them through tonight. And this time he had the distance, but not the accuracy. Bengal ball when we come back. the truck. Over the years, much has changed about the game. Today, the best in the business fly. And the airline that takes over 300 college and pro teams to their chosen field is united. Come fly the friendly skies. Number two, Miami takes their shot for the national championship when they meet SEC champ Alabama. The USF&G Sugar Bowl, New Year's night on ABC. We touched on this before. Look at the Vikings. A tremendous advantage over the opposition in the first, second, and third quarters, but on the negative side by plenty in the fourth as Cincinnati begins this drive with a two-yard pickup by Brooks. Just to, to digest it a little further here, as you can see, when you look at it score by quarters, the Vikings have been building up some big leads this year. There it is again. And look at that in the second quarter in particular. The tremendous disparity, but they've given up 106 points, scored only 43 in the fourth, and there it is, plus 143 through three. Minus 63 in the fourth. Second down and seven. Esiason dumps it over the middle. It's Brooks. Brooks seeking the first down. Has it. Takes it to the 49-yard line. First and ten. Scott Studwell makes the tackle. strongest players they ever had at UCLA. He set all kinds of strength records. And that time he put a crushing block on to James Brooks. Watch him again at the 
to Lee Brocker for number 21. Watch 21, though. I mean, look at him go to the air over his own people. Second and a long three. Off the fake. Asias and is sacked back at the 45 by Chris Goldman, who now has the league lead. Yeah, easy for Chris to want to be buddies. Boomer almost got out of it. Almost got out of it. He goes past Tim Harris on another big night for Dolman. That's actually Eric Caddis, the tight end, who's responsible for running Dolman out of the picture. And that's a good call by the official. You saw the knee of Esiason on the ground. Third and 15, look out for Noga from the backside. The pass over the middle to McGee, and a first down at the 39-yard line. And the Bengals tonight staying in the game because of their third down proficiency. They scored twice on third and 10. Here, a key third and 15 to keep this drive going. Uh, did you see Al Noga? Al Noga got close to Esiason and stopped. I mean, he... He looked like he might have been able to close in at the last second and really pulled up. Flashing over to the sidelines like he's having some sort of an equipment problem. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. 10.58 to play. Craig Taylor and Sanford Jennings are the running backs. Here's Jennings slipping inside, and Jennings taking it down to the 32-yard line. A pickup of close to seven. Ken Clark making the tackle. Six sacks now for the Vikings, one short of the Chicago Bears record of 72 sacks. Set back in, what, 1984. There it is, Minnesota was 71, and uh, two years ago the Bears was 70. Half a dozen tonight. Second and four at the 32. 10-15 to play. Taylor and Jennings are the running backs. Jennings. Spun down at the 28-yard line. That should be enough for a first down. Scott Studwell makes the tackle. Jennings, we told you early on, suffering from a bruised back in last week's game against Houston, and he was questionable coming into tonight. I think it gives you an idea of what the Cincinnati Bengals are thinking. Look, there's no tomorrow if we don't get this one tonight. So Jennings, who ordinarily would have been in there as a starter, actually gave way to Eric Ball, and now he's in the line. And the officials have stopped the clock right now. Looks like they've given a timeout to the Vikings as I think that Scott Studwell is shaken up. He came off the field and has bent over in front of Floyd Peters down on their sidelines. Indeed, it is charged to the Vikings. That's their first. They have two remaining. The clock stops with 9.41 remaining in the fourth quarter. We were talking with Scott Studwell before the game. I think he made a good point, Dan. He goes 100% all the time, always has now in his 13th year, but he's not very big. He only goes about 220 pounds. And I for the 16th game, you have worn down a little bit. Yeah, when you look at Scott and you see him early in the season, by the you're right. He starts to look like a hockey player about this time of the year. The face gets a little drawn. You can, he struggles to hold on to the weight. That linebacker eyes, too, doesn't he? Oh. One of the most intense players in the National Football League. Let's set it again now. If the Bengals win, they host a wild card game against Houston at Riverfront Sunday. If they lose, Pittsburgh is in the playoffs. They are at Houston. Vikings win, they're in the playoffs, they lose, they are out, Green Bay is in. Minnesota ahead, 22-14, first and 10, Cincinnati at the 28-yard line. Craig Taylor is the sole setback. He gets the ball, Taylor running into the official and getting it down to the 18-yard line, close to a first down. Ray Berry gets credit for the tackle, and he will come up about a half a yard short of the first. Have you noticed the difference in what's happening in this game? In the first half, Cincinnati virtually ignores their running game, and now in the second half, when they're attempting to gain control of the ball game, look how effectively they're using the ground game. Moving at right, moving at left, and getting some pretty good chunks when they do so. Second and one, and going with a new pair of running backs here in Taylor and Jennings after Ball and Brooks have played much of the game. A 
And there's play action on second and short. And underneath and wide open and making the catch is Taylor busting a tackle, getting oh. in for the touchdown. Craig Taylor, a rookie out of West Virginia. Sixth round draft pick, and Sam White said we may see him. He likes him. Fresh legs, and has made a big difference here in the fourth quarter. Green Bay. Delirium in Dairyland for the moment. Delirium in Dairyland. I don't even know why I repeated that. That's... Again, a reminder, play action is worthless unless you're effectively moving the ball on the ground. But look at the effort by Craig Taylor. Fights off to Spobic. There's Ray Berry with a shot. And still, he doesn't hit the ground until he gets the ball across the plane. What an effort that was. You understand what Sam Weitz was talking about. Not years of Don Nealon gave us Greg Taylor. Well, how huge does that play at the end of the first half look now when the Bengals opted to go for a fourth and ten, came up short. Vikings were able to move it down into field goal range, cashed in for three, and right now it's a one-point ball game. Sison looked quickly into the end zone for Holman, checked it off and goes out to Taylor and watched this effort. Bounces right off to Bobby. Somehow controls it, gets the football across the goal line, and this is the reactions of Jerry Burns. Boy, I'll tell you, it hurts. To become a leader, the result, jam-resistant radios for our armed forces, great service in Sheridan hotels, inns, and resorts, the finest quality in our digital electronic components, and one of the largest personal loan companies in the financial services industry. The challenge was to build our nine businesses into leaders. Today, we are leaders. ITT. Today, more people than ever are getting a kick out of this hot shot. Interstate batteries hit the road fast with all the cranking power and reserve energy you need for even the worst curves in the weather. And Interstate has twice as many dealers than any other battery company in America, so you're never left stranded. For an Interstate battery dealer near you, all you got to do is oh, call one eight hundred and crank it. Get the power that goes on and on and on, yeah. <laughs> The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours a safe and happy holiday season. And please remember, know when to say when. Put a luggage cart and a suitcase on what do you get? Samsonite's piggyback. It's particularly handy on long trips like the one from your car to the ticket counter. tonight if you joined us late Minnesota led in this game 19 to nothing right now it is Minnesota 22 Cincinnati 21 the Vikings have scored one touchdown tonight the Bengals have scored three but Carlos has kicked five field goals Minnesota leads by a point winner to the playoffs losers season is over Herschel Walker is back to receive we have 849 remaining in the fourth quarter, Lee Johnson to kick off for the Bengals. A bouncer fielded by Walker at the four. He tucks in behind Alfred Anderson, who provides the convoy, and Herschel takes it back to midfield, and a flag goes down at the 43-yard line. Yeah, the flag is pretty well upfield. It will come from that spot. A one-point ball game, and Jerry Burns thought he saw a big play coming his way. Holding number 86 on the return. First down. And a few moments ago, he watched a touchdown that probably should not have been a touchdown. It's Daryl Ingram, the... Backup tight end who got flagged for that. But most of the run back counts because yeah. it's 10 yards from the spot, so it comes back to the 33-yard line. And Minnesota has it first and 10. Again, the Vikings this season have scored only 43 points in the fourth quarter. And the catch is made by Carter. 
And he is pushed out of bounds, and the flag goes down as Eric Thomas jostles him. And that is D-U-M-B. Eric Thomas, who's been really playing extremely well tonight, has been all over the field. Unnecessary roughness, number 22, defense, first down. You don't hit another guy in the face without expecting to draw the flag. And, Eric, you can look at that screen all you want. It's not going to change. And, again, loss is the fact that Wade Wilson and Anthony Carter were in perfect sync. And now they'll mark off the yardage. There it is, right in front of the Vikings bench. Well, Thomas didn't like the fact that Anthony Carter didn't just jump out of bounds. But there's the problem is, is that his hands were up in the face. You know, if he just pushes him in the chest, I don't think that's going to draw the flag. It gave the impression to the official that he hit him in the head. See, Carter doesn't step out of bounds. He's going to take him on. And Anthony even throws a little forearm at him. But that's legal. But that's, it gave the impression he hit him in the face, when in reality he did. Deep drop on first and ten. A lot of pressure and going deep for Carter. And batted and almost caught by Anthony as Eric Thomas batted it. And then Carter was almost there to grab the deflection. Incomplete. Well, we almost made it easy for the highlight film people. They could have spliced that one right into the end of the Vikings highlight reel. I think it was probably why Bob Schnelker called that play. Come right back at Eric Thomas. He's all upset. Put him man for man in whatever formation you can against Carter, who gives you a little move to the inside. Thomas spun around, but his great feet gets back into it and goes up in the end. <laughs> Carter almost got it in the end zone. Second and 10, 8.26 to go. Okay. Is caught at the 26 yard line somehow, some way by Anthony Carter along the sideline. And enough for a first down. Oh, this is Anthony Carter that is just is coming back to what he was a year ago for these Vikings. Last week, big game against Cleveland. A little out again. Wilson underthrows a little bit, but Carter saves him. That's as good oh, as it gets. Oh, That's get as good as it gets. Look at this catch. I don't know what that's I don't know what's better, the catch or the camera work. <laughs> that looks like Georgie's work. Great job, guys. His seventh catch of the night as Benny takes it for a gain of about five to the 19-yard line. I got let's look at that again. I mean, what a catch. Hey, how does he keep this ball off the ground? I mean, you talk about laying out. Oh, that's just fabulous. Big Bo's proud oh, of that. That's just fabulous. His Bo didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> but he is proud of it. You're Bo, right. Bo says, how does he do that? Hey, I'm proud of it, too. Huh? Anybody who likes this game has got to like that. Second and three at the 19-yard line. Except people in Green Bay. It's Benny. He has a first down as he takes it to the 13. Rick Finney, not just another blocking back, not just another short yardage ball carrier. A talented receiver, a guy who's been digging for some tough yards tonight and has made some big plays for the Vikings. He has scored Minnesota's only touchdown on an 11-yard pass reception. First and 10, Vikings at the 13-yard line. Anderson and Fenny are the running backs. It's stumbled by Fenny. He picks it up back at the 22, and Ricky Dixon is there to make the tackle at the 20-yard line. Ball comes loose. Xander thought the play was still alive, and Haggard, he says, no, sir. But let's take a peek. Well, I, we always take well, a we'll peek. always do you know that. <laughs> Fenny made a great effort. I Instead of falling on the ball, which he probably should have done, he was able to handle the ball, get it back into his hands, and turn it around and get four or five yards out of it. Uh, what happens? The ball is still tucked away. Still tucked Whoa. away. Whoa! Looks like it might have come out early. That's a fumble. Looks like Skip McClendon got his right arm in there and knocked it out. But they don't review it, and it's second down and 16, and Wilson's going for the end zone. And They're going to get past that throw. Phillips. All over Hassan Jones. And Phillips is going to get another one if he doesn't get out of the official's face. And he will. Another flag goes down. Phillips making contact past the five yards. Hassan Jones trying to make an out. Holding number 24 on the defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 24 on the defense. Uh, 
shouldn't even be complaining about this. He just flat was caught. Well, we've had back-to-back -back bonehead plays by the Bengal corners. First Eric Thomas and now Lewis Phillips. That's contact way beyond the five-yard area. No question about the call. But then to come back and verbally accost an official, I mean, you know you're going to get it. You know you're going to get it. This is not professional wrestling where you throw them out of the ring. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, the daily double for Lewis Phillips. Two penalties, and look where the Vikings are going to end up with the ball. They will have a first and goal at the seven-yard line. Six minutes and 11 seconds to play. 22 to 21, Minnesota. You know, the illegal bump isn't a killer. You know, that's only a five-yard penalty. It's the unsportsmanlike conduct that really hurt the Bengals. Big games, you've got to keep your cool. Pressure situations, good ball players know when to be smart. Bengals have been penalized 27 yards on this drive. Walker takes it to the three-yard line. It'll be second and goal, and it's a loose ball, and Cincinnati has the football. No, the original signal is Cincinnati. Now he's saying Minnesota. Yeah, they sure did. He came out of there and gave the ball to Cincinnati. And no one from Cincinnati even argues, so they must have never even had the ball. He just came up and got disoriented. Yeah, yeah he pulled a Jim Marshall. He went the wrong way with it. <laughs> this is what Herschel Walker can do for you. Just take the stack, put it down with 230 pounds, and just drive people back. Clearly a fumble. It's also where he works best between the tackles. It's also where he fumbled. Second and goal. Here's Fenny through the middle. Back by Crumry. Third and goal. So third and goal at the one. Did it, you know, I you know I'm speechless here a little bit, which of course I'm sure is delighting to some people. <laughs> was, was that not a fumble? I mean, did he not, did Herschel Walker not drop the ball? That was clearly a fumble, but recovered by Minnesota. Somehow a Viking came up with a football. He did lose it, but yeah, he lost it. Clearly a it. fumble, but a Viking somehow got to the bottom of the pile. On third and goal, no. Fenny is stopped at the one-yard line. So it's fourth down and goal now. 445 remaining. Crowd saying go, 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 but... Burns has to block that out. Do you want to go for what would be a chip shot field goal? When you have four point lead. When you have the league's number one defensive unit, you can't get beat by a field goal when kicking a field goal gives you a four point lead. You have got to force the other team to score a touchdown to beat you. At least that's my philosophy, if I was a head coach, I mean, I mean, what do you think, guys? The flip side of that, you have the number one defense. If you don't make it, well, you should be able to make it. If you don't make it, you leave them down at the one-yard line. Well, what they did is they let as much time run off the clock as they could. The play clock went down to two. They now take a timeout with 4.22 remaining. The Vikings are down to their final timeout. Now they have one remaining. It's a tough call either way. I mean, you can... You can't heavily criticize it either way, but it's easier to make a decision when you've got the number one defense in the league. I agree. We can check in with Pittsburgh and Green Bay. Huh? But but I, 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 they have some thoughts. I agree. I, th I think you have the number one defense. you got to say, hey, guys, it's up to you. We're going to give you a four-point lead. You hold them. You just don't let them in the end zone. Exactly. But we if don't see Carlos it coming out. But, I mean, the other side, if they stuff it in, you know, now we got a 29-21 ball game, mm -hmm. and a touchdown doesn't even beat you. So. You know, the Cincinnati defense on third and short yardage, and this, of course, same situation you play your short yardage defense, they have done very poorly. The statistics very heavily weighted against them. And perhaps that factoring in to some degree on for Jerry Burns. Well, if you go for it, isn't this why you trade for Herschel Walker? I mean, it's real simple. Well, they've been here before, and this yeah. upset a lot of people. They have... He has not been the one that they've been giving it to. Well, 
and they've given it to him on a couple of occasions, but he hasn't gotten in. They have three tight ends in the game. They'll come up on a tight set. They'll come up there with Fenny as the fullback, and Walker setting up at the seven-yard line. On fourth down, they fake it to Walker and loft it into the end zone, and a touchdown to Novoselsky. Give me a break. You think Bob Schmelker, who called that play, is perhaps thinking he's moving on if it doesn't work? And it's popular in Pittsburgh. Brent Novoselsky. And when Wade Wilson put that ball in the air, guys, I didn't think Novoselsky was going to be able to get to it. Well, he has not had a whole lot of practice doing so. He usually is in there strictly to block. Here's the play action, a little bit of it to Hersha Walker. Look at this effort. That's wide receiver all the way. And that is an absolutely perfect throw by Wade Wilson. Novoselsky's second touchdown of the year. Here's Carlos for the extra point. An irony of ironies, Novoselsky started the season with Green Bay. Picked up on waivers by Minnesota and may have just put Green Bay out of the playoffs. Long time to go. 417 to play. I got to go back to the call. Minnesota has struggled trying to get it in. They've been using Walker. They've been using Finney. This time, a little bit of a play action. Great call, but a great catch by Novoselsky, the former Packer. Sometimes I dream I'm in Italy driving this incredible sports car. And my boss is there. He says, We need a ride to the shareholders meeting. Now, here's where it gets weird. The sports car has four doors. I mean, there's no such thing as a four-door sports car. It's just a dream, right? It was Dean Witter's personal philosophy of success. We have a sacred trust to protect our customers. But its impact was felt on California Street. To maintain conservative policies. On Lincoln Street and Acorn Street. To put the interest of our clients first. Dean Witter put principles before profit, people before portfolios. There are many ways to measure success on Wall Street. We measure success one investor at a time. Dean Witter, a member of the Sears Financial Network. Premium champagne. The product. The proving grounds. The results. STP gas treatment is the edge. Brent Novoselsky plays sparingly. He's the number three tight end. And of course, when you play. Uh, behind somebody like Steve Jordan, you will play sparingly. Yeah, but the guy's got four catches on the year and two of them are touchdowns, so they're not afraid to go to him in the short yardage. Cincinnati down by eight. Richard Carey runs back the kick out to the 25-yard line. The and catch was, was almost as spectacular as the call was. Well, this might be called a tale of four cities because not only are these two teams affected, but Watch what the catch by Brett Novoselsky does in other places. First, how about a look at the call in Pittsburgh? <laughs> and, of course, you can imagine the reaction in Green Bay. Not nearly as jubilant as the Steeler faithful. A Dickensian pronouncement, a tale of four cities, he says. I like that. Not a big hit in Green Bay. There's the play. That's Rich Moran, and that hurts. That hurts. Meanwhile, hope that wasn't the proverbial towel being thrown in by the Packers. That's a lot of time left here, 408. And three timeouts left. The injured Bengal on the kickoff return, Leon White. 
who looked uh, as if he might have been seriously shaken up initially, but uh, fortunately able to get up and trot off as the Bengals take over at their own 25-yard line. 29 to 21, Minnesota by eight. Sasson fires to the near side, and the catch is made. No, McGee is out of bounds at the 37-yard line. No catch. Second and ten. Didn't get both feet in bounds. One in, one out. Second and ten. I really didn't know what to expect in terms of the crowd here on Christmas night. The crowd has been part of the scene. Ball and Brooks are the running backs and his movement as Holman comes across the line. Boy, I wait till the crowd gets a little whiff of the fact that they caused that confusion. They'll be even louder this time around. Ball start, 82. Holman jumping. Vikings trying to give this crowd one last Christmas present. to win to the playoffs they go and they have next week off as well second and 15 Sias and fires incomplete intended for Eddie Brown it'll be third down and 15 just good coverage on the part of the Vikings Sias had no place to put it Again, if the Vikings win this game, they'd win the Central Division crown. They would play on the road the weekend of January 6th or 7th, either at New York or at San Francisco. Got a new twist here. The crowd whistling. Well, they're penetrating. But it is disruptive. Everything has to be passed along. Third and 15. And too high for Holman. So it's fourth and 15, they're down by eight, and for the moment anyway, the Bengals are sending in the punting unit. Oh, they really don't have a choice. Fourth and one or two, maybe you gotta think about it as a, as a big gamble, but on your own 20-yard line, you have no choice but to punt it away. Well, not even a consideration, no. Yet. Punt it away and take your timeouts on defense, says Leo Lewis. Is back at his own 40-yard line. Line drive. Lewis at the 45. Into Cincy territory. Takes it to the 48. Vikings will try to take time off the clock. And the Bengals will have to take their timeouts on defense after a 36-yard punt and an 8-yard return. Next Monday, January 1st, 1990, triple header. Bowl Fest 90 on ABC. Illinois against Virginia. Begins things at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 in the morning Pacific. That's the Florida Citrus Bowl. Bo Schembechler's final game, number three ranked Michigan against the Trojans of Southern Cal. From Pasadena, we'll be in New Orleans for the USF and G Sugar Bowl. Second ranked Miami, seventh ranked Alabama to wrap it up at 8.30 Eastern next Monday night. Here's Anderson on first down from the 48-yard line, fighting his way to about the 43, and that'll make it second down and five, and Cincinnati has to spend the timeout. Of course, the key now is protecting the ball. If you're one of the backs with it, you cover it up on both sides. Interesting, too, uh, Dan, that Herschel Walker is on the sidelines. We talked about how difficult it is to come into a no offense, particularly when you were a back like Herschel Walker that was born and bred in the I formation. Meanwhile, White is angry because you could see the clock ticking down a couple of more seconds after they had called timeout or attempted to get the officials to, to, to stop the clock. And that's exactly what White is saying. When you look at Herschel Walker and his contributions to this Viking team, just strictly in terms of what's happened up to this point, 1989, I don't know any way you could look at that trade as a really good deal for Minnesota. I mean, I'm not saying it can't become that. Herschel Walker may run for 2,000 yards next year. 
but to this point mm -hmm. in time, he's not as productive as I think everyone thought he was going to be. They just put, if he does, it'll be at a different offense. They put three seconds back on the clock. Here's Anderson right. trying to get outside, takes it to the 42-yard line. It's going to be third and four. They take a timeout. Meanwhile, you, when you talk about acquisitions, how about the acquisition of Carlos? And there's White saying again, hey, look, guys, I'm calling a timeout. Stop the clock. It was still running. Went three or four more seconds. Well, he's got a good point. It did continue to run for another three or four seconds, and they ought to, they ought to put some time back on the clock. Yeah. I think they're discussing that at the moment. Nice T-shirt there behind you. Yeah, side. take a look at that, right? <laughs> where do you get those? I don't know where you get them. Pat Haggerty wisely puts the time back on the clock. Not appreciated by the Metro crowd. Cincinnati. 322 remaining. Sam White. You know, I'll say one thing about White. You gotta love him. He's very outspoken. He's very candid, but he is sincerely candid and outspoken. And last week, of course, he um, he poured it on against Houston. He said, "I don't take back what I said. I, I'm just sorry that it became such a cause celeb." You know, I, really, I like them because, you know, there are coaches in this league who attempt to be candid, but they attempt to manipulate the media in the guise of candor. We made a good but point. Not white. He said, I, I'm not sorry for what I said. I feel bad because I, de I detracted from, from Reggie Williams' last game at Riverfront Stadium, regular season game, and I'm sorry that I kind of stole the show. That's not what I intended. Third and four. Here's Fenny stopped by Dixon, and now Cincinnati will take their time in. Houston there this coming Sunday, but the Bengals are in trouble, big time. Did you get my drift, by the way, on uh, the attempted media manipulators? Al, you say <laughs> nothing in which I do not okay. drift along with you. Okay. I think there was one. Were you on the referring to someone in particular? On the visiting sideline maybe last week in New Orleans. The visiting sideline. I must ponder that. Mm -hmm. So many ramifications tonight. Pittsburgh, Green Bay. You think about this game having started way back in July and the two a days and how much the legs hurt, ached and you're winding down to 313 remaining in the regular season and it's still affecting Four ball clubs. And yet, didn't the three of us talk on the phone back in April when the league schedule came out, and we looked at this game, and we knew that this might have a shakedown effect all the way down two conferences, the AFC and the NFC, and boy, how prophetic that was. Bucky Scribner in to kick. A little pooch punt coming up here. With 3.13 to play, when the Bengals get it back, they are without a timeout. Tries to get it into the corner, and that's just uh, not as close to perfect as you can get under the circumstances. That's another nail in the coffin. Won't do much for the gross punting average, only 34 yards, but... No, but it'll help out. Mike Lynn about that at contract time. It'll help out the gross salary. Yes. The playoff check appears to be coming Minnesota's way, although 3.06 to play. The Bengals have firepower enough to score quickly. They have no timeouts remaining. From the five, first and ten, here's Esiason. Dumps it to Brooks. He gets wrestled down by Berry. And again, the Bengals without a timeout. Come right up to the line at the 11. Clock will stop just once more at the 2 minutes 20, 29 to 21 Minnesota. Second and four. Brooks takes it up to the 17 yard line. Barry makes the tackle, and that's a first down. That's not the way they're going to get it done, though, unfortunately. Another gamble by Brooks that he could get big yardage inside instead of sprinting to the sidelines to stop the clock. On 
first and ten. And that's all the Vikings are giving them, the underneath stuff. Here's Holman out to the 31, and that takes us to the two-minute warning. So this Cincinnati. defensive line, now this defensive line of Minnesota, I mean, they are exhausted, and we've got a player down on the field. In fact, we got two players down on the field. We that's Henry Thomas and Munoz mm -hmm. again. And we come to the two-minute warning as they attend to Munoz and Thomas. Snow is glistening. A beautiful sight. We're happy tonight. Walking in the winter wonderland. Gone away. If I had a Nissan 240F that, I'd get a red coupe. No, silver fastback. And I'd go for a spin of Route 7. The twisty part. Just me and Elvis. Maybe Mark. Heck, why not Ken Wall? Yeah, me and Ken in my silk. No, red 240SX. Driving into the sunset. You want me to start talking now? What we're looking for here is value. We're an aircraft management company. We want to associate with companies that share our same standards, companies that uh, do business the way we do, companies of quality. Here's somebody we've obviously done business with, that you are kind of what you surround yourself with. See, I don't know how to sell computers. I know how to buy them, though. And I guess that's the significant thing. Is this the way you ordinarily do um, commercials, just? The headache feels like a rubber band going around my head. I have pain. I hurt. Today, Darnell Moore is trying extra-strength Tylenol gel caps for pain like his. Why take aspirin or ibuprofen when nothing works better than Tylenol gel caps? No throb, no headache, and definitely no rubber band. I'm going to go with the gel caps. Gel caps work. Tylenol gel caps, only from Tylenol. For everyday pain, nothing works better. And for your cold this winter, now try Tylenol cold medication. Henry Thomas and Anthony Munoz have both left the field. There's Henry Thomas, number 97. He comes in, and you can see his left knee gets caught and hyperextended as Keith Millard goes down. And you see him immediately clutching his left knee. Anthony Munoz went off. It didn't. It was very difficult for us to ascertain what was wrong with Munoz. First and 10 from the 31-yard line. The catch is made, or is it? No. Kendall Smith didn't have control of it. But does one official come in and overrule the other? The Let's only see. thing, apparently so. The only thing I want to pass along about Anthony Munoz is that uh, it didn't appear to be anything with his leg. No one fell on his leg. No one collapsed a knee or anything like that. For us. So for those of you that are his family, friends, and relatives, uh, uh, it doesn't appear to be anything calamitous with a leg. And we did see him earlier in the game go out with what appeared to be a sore shoulder. So he could have compounded that injury. Well, it's fitting that the year ends with a, uh, a zebra conference again. <laughs> You know, well, let's face it. We've gotten on these guys. All the announcers have, the writers this year, the whole thing. It's a tough, tough job. There's no question about it. Well, if the but feet were in, it looked, looked like a catch. Good. If the feet were in, uh, it appeared to me that possession uh, of the ball was made with the feet in bounds. And let's out. look at it again. You can. Does he handle the ball? I saw the possession on the other angle. No question about the feet. Dragging the left foot. And that looked like a catch to me. Al, you know, your point is right. You, you you hate to whip on these guys too much. It's a job that nobody wants. But still, it's our job. When we see something. Catching it out of bounds. First down. Yeah, and that's a good job there. The system works. System works. Okay. We get tired of beating up on these guys because that's not really our intent. It's just what are we going to do? You see a call you disagree with. There's we a don't beat up on them by the time you flogged them while they're on their knees. <laughs> well, I don't, I hate to inflict pain. <laughs> but it's getting, it's getting tougher and tougher is what it amounts to. Year after year from the 41-yard line. Here's Esiason back to pass. And throws to Brooks, and the play is over at the 46-yard line, down on contact at the 47. Joey Browner gets credit for the tackle. Again, the Bengals cannot stop the clock. They've got to take big play here soon. Get a big chunk of it.
lofted to Holman, and he's got a first down, taking it to the 47. Barry and Studwell in on the tackle again on Sunday. Rams will be at Philadelphia, and unless something incredibly dramatic happens here, Pittsburgh will be at Houston. Here's Eric Ball. And they keep him inbounds. And the Viking players on the sideline are imploring the crowd to get up. They want more noise. They didn't need much help. No. And the crowd here at the Hubert A. Tuffery Metrodome more than willing to help out. Second and ten. Esiason throws, and there's Brooks, and he goes out of bounds, a little short of the first down. Let's not let it pass. If Pittsburgh goes to the playoffs, i got to tell you, a lot of amazing things happened this year. But if somebody would have told you the Pittsburgh Steelers would go to the playoffs after the first two weekends of the year, you would have had them committed. Chuck Knoll, our hats off to you. Tremendous job. Indeed. And what he was confronted with for the past couple of years, sliced up, diced up, and got him back in again, it does appear. Incredible. They're also aided by a tremendous amount of mediocrity in the AFC in terms of, you know, a lesser record in the AFC qualifies you for the playoffs. Nonetheless, 9-7. and seven. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And to the playoffs they go. Third down and two from the 39. Esiason throws, and that's incomplete. 91 to 10, this 92 to 10 were the uh, composite scores in the Steelers' first two games this season. They were routed on opening day by Cleveland. They were routed by Cincinnati. And uh, they rebounded and wind up winning nine of their last 14, and they're making uh, plain reservations for Houston right now. Well, we're throwing the kudos around. How about a few for Green Bay, too? They came back under Lindy and Fatty. Mm -hmm. And keep your eye on them next year. Fourth and two. And Esiason keeps the Bengals alive. McGee goes out of bounds at the 23-yard line, and that's a first down. And Deuce Bobic is shaken up and holding his ankle. I think realistically now you have to think get it in the end zone. Clock is stopped with 28 seconds. Guys, I think I'll take this opportunity to uh, say, hey, this is our final Monday night game of the year in the NFL. We move to college next Monday night with the Sugar Bowl, but this is our last go around this year uh, thanks again for another great year this is uh, finishing number three for me number four for you Alan number 19 for you I'm Frank that's uh, thanks for the ride guys 400 of them we'll put it that way yeah. uh, indeed what a pleasure we've had some great uh, games I'd like to just thank some of the players uh, all the players that have performed for us it's been yeah. one of the best years I can recall in terms of just the actual games Frank the next time we see you you'll be a little uh, weary bleary eyed from all of those two o'clock feedings I guess Listen, I have said it before my nanny will have a nanny <laughs> my nanny will have a nanny <laughs> I want to also tell you Al if you will see me one who will get on a top rated show next what next three days you yeah. just walk down the street from Good Morning America and join Regis and Kathy Lee <laughs> I mean, live you, you've done Good Morning America before do, do you wake up to do it or you do, do you do it at the end of your day just stay up all night I know, <laughs> can't well, figure it out I yet. tried it both ways I think the first one works better just stay up roll with it and that wonderful lady you'll be joining Joan London she will help you well, why don't we start by thanking uh, Kenny Wolf our producer and Craig Janoff our director and all the way down the line in the truck, uh, you are the very best. I mean, come on, get out of here. We will, we will roll the credits at the end as we wrap up year number 20 in Cincinnati. Meanwhile, tries to keep this going on first down and into the end zone and drop by Darrell Fullington. Well, that would have written a complete finish to this one. Instead, 22 seconds remain. Boomer tonight is 30 out of 51. And that's why this game is over three and a half hours long. And that's what they came in to do. Number one in the league in rushing, the Cincinnati Bengals, and they put the ball up in the air that many times. That's not what they're about. No, but I think it's also a, uh, a credit to the defensive team of the Vikings. They take a lot of things away from you. And the front four of the Vikings tonight has been just sensational. Second and ten from the 23-yard line. And Esiason's throw is short. 
And we're down to 18 seconds. And I'd be very surprised if Floyd Peters, the defensive coordinator of the Vikings, isn't one of those guys that gets a long look. There's Floyd. Gets a long look at some of the coaching vacancies that are out there now and almost surely will crop up again in the next couple of weeks. A yearly ritual. And this guy's ready. Sergeant Rock, his players call. Former pro bowler himself of the Philadelphia Eagles. And yep. wherever he's gone, the pass rush has changed dramatically. Third and ten. And it's Brooks who gets bumped out of bounds. That stops the clock with 13 seconds, but fourth down coming up. McMillan covering on the play. So the Bengals to the Super Bowl last year. And right now on the verge of being the only team in the AFC Central not going to the playoffs. Well, you look into the eyes of Sam Weiss and you think back to training camp. You think back to that final drive by Joe Montana taking the Super Bowl away from the Bengals 2016. Celebration continues in Pittsburgh. Fourth and eight. Flag is down. And it's caught by Brown for what would be a touchdown. And we'll see about the flag. Uh, Keith Millard got manhandled at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if it was a tripping or a hold or whatever. Yeah, they're going to call tripping. Yep. They're Keith tripping. Millard is going to come out of there. Boy, does he get a big-time leg whip. Well, they're celebrating in Pittsburgh, and I think on that last call, they're celebrating, uh, well, half of Vegas is celebrating. The other half is crying. And here comes Millard. Listen to the hand this guy will get. Oh, has he been tough over the past few weeks, playing with a separated shoulder, having to leave almost tripping two or three times a game with that pain. Look to the right. Look to the right. Watch Millard try to come out. Ooh, and there's the trip. That's an unidentified Bengal on the ground, Bruce Reimers, Kelly Haynes tells us. That's two for Reimers. Reimers has had a tough go around, but again, a reminder, he's, he's playing Nick. He's got the flu, and Keith Millard is tired. And it nullifies a Bengal touchdown. Boomer wisely pulls up and hits Eddie Brown in the end zone. Well, look at the work with the feet. Oh, man, what a oh. great pass. 29-28 ball game with four seconds left. Barring a defensive penalty, this would be the final play of the game, and we're going to have a defensive penalty because the Vikings have jumped. Esiason just throws it up for grabs. The pass is incomplete, but if the call is against the Vikings, there's still a play to go. Outside, defense, one more play. Well, still intense interest around the big screens at every sports book in Vegas right now. It's amazing how, many, right. <laughs> how many people have remained here. You're right. The Vikings were, I believe, five and a half to six points, depending upon where you were. A Bengal score right now. Uh-oh. The Vikings are armed with the Gatorade. That could mean only one thing. Watch out, Jerry. At the 25-yard line. A good guy, Jerry Burns. Bob Schnucker will be a genius. Last play of the season. Into the end zone. And into the playoffs go the Vikings. And Burns got it. <laughs> And the Vikings unbeaten at home this year. They and go 8 0 under the dome. And 13 consecutive wins. And for all intents and purposes, so ends the first round of the playoffs. Vikings get a week off. Bengals get about seven months off. Steelers, uh, they go right back to work tomorrow, happily. Green Bay, great season for the Packers, but unfortunately 10 and 6 just doesn't do it in the NFC Central. No, but we're looking at a team right there that next year I fully expect to challenge the Vikings for that crown. 
clearly an up-and-coming ball club. There's the your back. final score. Minnesota wins it 29 to 21. Meanwhile, let's take a look now at the NFC and the uh, complete and clarified playoff picture for you. Rams are at Philadelphia early game Sunday. Divisional playoffs now the following weekend. If the Rams win that game, the Rams would go to the Meadowlands to face the Giants, and Minnesota would go to Candlestick to play the Niners. If Philadelphia wins the wild card game, Minnesota goes to the Meadowlands. Regardless of what happens in that game, Minnesota plays on the road. If Philadelphia wins, Philadelphia goes to Candlestick in the uh, divisional playoffs the weekend of the 6th and 7th. The AFC, quite clear. Wild card game is Sunday at the Astrodome. Pittsburgh against Houston on New Year's Eve. Buffalo meets Cleveland the following weekend. Whether it's Saturday or Sunday has yet to be determined. Denver is at home that weekend, be it Saturday or Sunday. They will meet the winner of the Pittsburgh-Houston game at Mile High Stadium. Home field advantage belongs to Denver throughout in the AFC, to San Francisco throughout in the NFC with the Super Bowl January 28th at the Superdome in New Orleans. And we've been checking in all night. Dwayne Woodruff has been hosting a major party at his home in Pittsburgh. And congratulations, sir, as you guys are on your way to Houston. Share some thoughts with us, Dwayne. Well, I'll tell you what. It's uh, you know, been a long time for, for our Pittsburgh. And uh, you know, we're, we're great to be in the playoffs and uh, looking forward to going down there and battling Houston. So you guys will be down there in the late game now on Sunday. And I mean, be, be honest with me. When you, you get outscored 92 to 10 through the first two weeks of the season, I mean, you couldn't have even dreamed about this. Well, uh, you know, we still had a lot of confidence in our football team. You know, we uh, didn't play like uh, we were that good the first two ball games, but we knew we weren't that bad. Uh, we regrouped, and, and 45 guys came together, and it's paying off for us now. Some people said Chuck Knoll may have lost his magic. Uh, I think Chuck is still a pretty good magician, isn't he? Well, he pulled off a, a good trick for us uh, this year, uh, but, you know, he's got 45 good players and, and some other good coaches that are making things happen, and uh, we're playing, playing very good now. Your thoughts about Houston, Dwayne? Well, obviously, uh, you know, they beat us twice this year, uh, both down, down there and also in Pittsburgh, uh, but, uh, you know, it's a different situation now, and we're going to bring a little bit more heat than we have the past two times. All right, thank you, Dwayne, and thank you for having us in your home on uh, this Christmas night. And we hope it's been a very happy holiday for all of you. And our thanks to the uh, Green Bay Packers for letting us into the home of Brian Noble tonight, Sherry Burns. And that's exactly the way he had hoped this night would end with a celebratory dousing as we end our celebration of 20 years of Monday Night Football at the Metrodome in Minneapolis with a reminder that Saturday ABC Sports will be taking a look back at some of the year's great moments in golf championships of the USGA beginning at two Eastern one Central and three Pacific and his college football bowl game excitement as Georgia meets Syracuse in the Peach Bowl that's live from Atlanta 2:30 Eastern and 11:30 a.m. Pacific now except on the West Coast we invite you to stay tuned for ABC News Nightline following your late local news over most of these ABC stations. Well guys it's been a, a sensational year as we uh, spend a moment now taking a look at some of the people who helped make all of this happen on Monday Night Football and it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Jeffrey Mason our executive producer and there's none better than our man the Wolfman our illustrious producer and Craig Janoff who's sensational at the console alongside Joey Chavo and Harvey and Woody Freiman our ADs and all of the people who make it happen week after week the maestro Steve Hurd himself and George Hill and Kelly Hayes up here in the booth and <laughs> the great one Billy Edwards and on and on it rolls they are the very very best you have no idea how easy they make our jobs like a traveling show we're somewhere else every week and you get awfully close when you work the kinds of games that we have this past year very competitive there are some MVPs right there folks the cameraman on Monday Night Football and, and the guys on top of their game tonight great shots tonight Special, 
I guess mahalo, as they would say in Hawaii, to a lot of these people because uh, it's Christmas. It's Christmas around the country, but uh, a lot of these folks away from home and wanting us to extend uh, through them their uh, very best wishes uh, to their families on this very special night, which ends with the Minnesota Vikings advancing to the playoffs. And a wrap on our uh, 20th season of Monday Night Football. And uh, the games this season, highly competitive almost week after week. It was a great schedule, and it turned out to just about the way we had hoped. Oh, it turned out better than we could even possibly dream in terms of how many games we had that went down to the last play of the game. And, of course, in memory of our two fallen comrades. Gentlemen, thank you. ABC's Monday Night Football has been brought to you by Nissan, built for the human race. By Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, know when to say when. By MCI's primetime plan. Real savings, let us show you. And by the good time, great taste of your holiday place, McDonald's. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly sky. This is ABC. Good evening, Ontario, all of southwestern Idaho and eastern Oregon. This is News Watch 6 Nightcast. Renewed fighting in Panama tonight as the Vatican Embassy refused to release Manuel Noriega. Dense fog is making Treasure Valley roads hazardous for those traveling tonight. Baseball legend Billy Martin died tonight. And on Health Watch, health experts making sure you get the best emergency heart care. News Watch 6 Nightcast is just ahead. Napa Auto Parts has teamed up with the National Football League to bring you fantastic savings on quality Napa Auto Parts and official NFL premium wearables. Get your favorite team premiums at 30 to 60% savings with a purchase of $10 or more from Napa. See your local Napa Auto Parts store for official NFL wearables. Caldwell Auto Supply. Payette Auto Parts.